Oddly enough, this is exactly what the comments are talking about. What happens if you tune up without a call sign? This song gets made. That's the primary reason this song exists. <laughs> That's funny. How's it going, everybody? Another good chat with Randy tonight. So, welcome. I'll wait for the song to finish. Yeah, there you go. Welcome to the Am Radio Crash Course After Chat. Our goal here is to answer your questions. And it doesn't have to be amateur radio specific, but you'll find more often than not that there's a lot of hams in the house. A house full of hams. And uh, yeah, so we're going to we're gonna be able to answer those questions a little bit better. But with that said, oftentimes ham radio operators have... I don't want to say greater skills than uh, CB operators or GMRS, but we definitely had to test uh, to be proficient in a, a lot of those same areas, so we'll at least be able to talk about a lot of it. Plus, most amateur radio operators are active on GMRS and CB, so if you followed us along and you're not a ham radio operator, that's okay. No prejudice here at all. We support all you guys. Uh, I did realize, though, that I did not get the chat room set up, so I'm going to do that right now. So we're going to set that up live. This is definitely the stuff you would like to do before you go live, but hey, you know, you forget that and things happen. Having fun with Randy. Just ignore that chat that's on the left side of me here. We're going to get that swapped over uh, right now. There it goes. <laughs> so appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with us. So what we like to do here, it's really simple. Uh, there's a link in the description to just Discord. And our Discord server is a live 24-7 hop in place where you can answer, well, you can ask any amateur radio. God, I'm all over, stepping all over myself. You can ask any radio questions that you want, ham radio or otherwise, and there's a wealth of people that will come out and try and do their best to help you. But we also do a live voice chat for this show. And so how you get into that is you go to your settings for Discord and you go to the audio settings that are going to be on the left-hand side there. And you make sure you set a mic and a speaker and make sure your PTT button is set so that's something you can remember. That way, when you scroll all the way down on our Discord server, do hashtag live-stream slash after chat and you join us on the voice call, you'll be able to hop in there, ask your questions, and we can ask the very important follow-up questions that come from a lot of this, like... What is your budget? How far do you want to talk? You know, what what are your complications? Are you an HOA? Those are all very important things that we like to ask. So, with that said, we're going to dive in and say hi to our friends over on the Discord. So let me pull that up right uh, right meow, please. Randy does have a previous engagement, so he is hopping off. Uh, we did. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll maybe we'll catch him on a Discord at some point in the future, but not this week. Well. well Sorry, I was talking over somebody. Go ahead, finish up your uh, your your thought there. Uh, yeah, you, you know, Craig, it, it might be worth just popping the cover off and taking a look at it. Uh, it, it could be a simple cap or something that's that's easy to replace. And um, it, as Josh can attest to, those caps make a little bit of smoke when they when they pop. <laughs> Indeed, they do. Ah, there you go. I hope that was helpful. All right, so welcome everybody to the after chat. We're live on the Discord, so we're chatting with a number of our friends out here. Appreciate everybody coming on over after the uh, the Not a Rubicon chat. So, what we do, as I already mentioned, if you are new to the Discord, so this is your first time on Voice. I know I got started a little early, so there might not be any newcomers yet. So we'll 
will come back around. Uh, if you are new to the Discord and this is your first time, we'd love it if you introduce yourself. That's not a requirement, but uh, it's a welcoming place, I promise. It's not a big deal. Just say hi, and if you have a question, your questions go first. So this is your opportunity to get your questions answered as fast as possible. So is anybody new out here to the Discord that would like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Yeah, people are still rolling in. So I got, we came off the live stream and I got started pretty quickly. So uh, let's see. Oh, no, Corpse a lot will not be joining us live uh, this week. That's all right, buddy. Appreciate you. And uh, just for you, I'll give you a troll. Corpse a lot sent a super chat uh, after after our live stream. He mentioned that there was interference on the GMRS repeater that he that that one of the ones he can hear, and that is what is playing twenty four seven is the old Trollolol song off of uh, YouTube. So that's amazing, uh, one of my favorites. That's a that's a hot banger from back in the the old internet days. So right on. All right, let's take another call here. Anybody new here for the first time would like to say hi or ask a question? Your questions get priority and go first. So go ahead. Mm. Not a one, not a one. All right. Uh, oh, was that somebody? Did I miss a key up? Nope. Okay. So then uh, let's just uh, run down the list here. Anybody have any questions or comments from today's show? Anything they want to hit upon or talk upon or maybe we were incorrect about? Let's uh, let's do the best we can to correct that. Go ahead. Comment. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, you mentioned about the old TV detector vans. I yes, I did. you right. Oh, please. They're not Go involved ahead. in any way with the BBC. Huh? Okay, they would what? belong to the post office, who were the who are the or at the time the licensing authority for the BBC. Uh, so they were the the, the post office uh, um, the detector vans, uh, 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 and there's one in the British Science Museum. If you want to have a look at it, yeah. an amazing vehicle. The theory is perfectly sound on, and I'm not going to bore you with any more of it. Well, wait, so what is it looking for? The lights that are being reflecting or coming out of people's windows, or what is it doing? No, no. It, it, you know how it, the TV transmitter is basically a TV receiver is a standard uh, receiver, yeah? Yeah. So when you mix, when you get the first mixer product from mixer to IF, you've got the positive side and the negative side. Uh huh. So there's an emission, yeah? It was looking for that. All TVs are the same. So it was looking for that emission signal. It could even tell what channel you were on because of what frequency the IF was on. But so what did... it did was they yeah. had that thing with a spectrum analyzer in it, listening for this, you know, you've seen the, the, the radio communications test circuit, uh, uh -huh. test gadget, one yeah. like that, with a very high, a very, very high gain directional UHF antenna. Okay. Right? And then they would look at that. Then they had a list of everybody that had a TV license on that street. Ah. And if you had, so if you had that emission coming from your house, but you didn't have a TV license, they would bang on the door. Now, what they did on in blocks of flats or like multiple occupation I was going to say, yeah, how do they deal with the know. interference? But yeah. for a house, it is directional enough for them to work out. For a house, and it was yeah, all to do with IF, and it literally was the gadget you bought recently, the the old fashioned uh, the communications test thing. It was one of those connected up to a very nice aerial array to work it out. And and say, so I know we got when I was a kid, my dad got busted, so I it, I know it worked. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was all to do with the post uh, the post office ran the TV license as they ran the amateur radio license until like the mid 70s and then they set it up and when they moved it away from the post office it got less and less and less teeth now wow. it's i don't know who it's run by now that's fascinating i thought that was just a an empty box you know those those things in the front of the uh the no, van no, in it, the back it, that's impressive all perfectly good theory it should work and and in the uk to own a house you're a rich person so they were going after rich people well, you know, they were just going after your. You know, back then you didn't have to be a rich person. It, they, they, their houses were really cheap. 
literally. I mean, yeah, they used to be really cheap until they changed how the mortgages work, but that's another story. That's but, fascinating. Well, thank you. I, I I learned a little bit today. I did pull up the van and I looked at it. And I'm like, oh, that's got to be garbage. And I I guess yeah, they they have problems with it. You know, if it's a an apartment or some densely packed multiple TV type environment with multiple homes, that that could be an issue. So, uh, interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that, Mike. I appreciate that. All right, we'll make one last call and then we'll go say hi to our YouTube friends. Anybody here for the first time that would like to say hi or ask a question, come now. Hi, my name's Zach. Hey, Zach. Go ahead, man. The floor is yours. So I'm going to be studying for my test soon, but I am a, I do have a GMRS license at the moment. I am actually having a little bit of an issue. Um, I set up um, a mobile radio as a home base, mm -hmm. and I set it up to... Um, Talk to a repeater, and I've had no issues talking to the repeater until the last couple of days. And for some strange reason, it just won't hit the repeater anymore. And I have done nothing. I've changed nothing, and I don't know why it would do that. Uh, is your are you, is this from inside your house talking on a handheld? It's on a twenty-five watt mobile, and I have an antenna on my roof. Are you sure the antenna's in good working order or it's lost connection in some way? Uh, I put uh, an SWR meter on it. Oh, okay. And I'm still getting... The SWR is a little high. It's like 1.6. Mm. Um, but it's still 1.6 from when I first started using it. Oh, it so no change. Like... No, nothing no change, changed. No. Okay. When I first had the issue yesterday, I did think um, maybe some water got into it. Maybe I didn't um, protect the uh, the coax connections. So we didn't really have any rain, but I did go and put um, some protection tape. I got it from uh, HRO. They told me to wrap it on there. But, I mean, like I say, I didn't. we didn't really have any rain. That was just one thing I thought, oh, well, I'll do that while I'm up there. But I didn't do anything. I just looked at it, took it apart, unplugged it, put it back up there, and it's still, I, I don't know why it won't work. And it was. I, I don't know what's changed. So water would be the big thing that I would worry about. So the fact that you already checked for that is, you know, or you didn't check completely, but you, you did something. Uh, and the SWR didn't change, so that would be my first indication there was an issue there. Um, yeah, I took the plug apart and I'd like I looked in it and put my finger in it, make sure there was no moisture inside the coax connector. I couldn't see anything. So yeah, there was a comment from Corpse a lot. Are you sure the repeater is still using the same tones? Yes, because I can still hear people. Well, that just means they might have the new tone. I'm not sure. Then I mean, I did go on to my GMRS. Um, maybe they've changed it, but. I don't think they have. Do you have sure. a GMRS handheld by chance? And how far away is the repeater? I do have a handheld, but I'm too far away from the repeater. That's actually why I got a mobile unit. Even if you're outside? Region. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Okay. That's a tricky one. So... Most the most most times when I run into a problem hitting a repeater, I just try with a second radio and see if I can hit it with that radio, and then that removes all the issues. But since this is your primary repeat or your primary radio, um, I've and, even I've even pro programmed a different repeater in that's even a little bit closer. I've never used that repeater before, uh -huh. but I wasn't getting. I would would you call it the squelch tone at the end when you get that feedback? Yeah, I still wasn't getting it from that one either, and that one's probably five to six miles closer. Oh, so you have tried other repeaters and you still are not hearing anything? I'm I'm not getting that that tone at the end after I, after I press the PTT. So, does your does yeah. your SWR meter also have a power meter for the transmit side, or is it? Uh, is yes. It, and are you putting power out? I'm. It says twenty one watts. Oh, okay. So the radio is functioning correctly. That, um, that's what I was going to say. That that proves that there's nothing wrong with my radio, right? Yeah. If I'm getting an SWR and I'm getting power on my meter. Yeah. So we're okay. we're trying to work we're we're going through a process of elimination to try and find your issue. 
Uh, if the radio has not changed and it worked before and the radio is putting out the appropriate amount of power as it did before, uh, the, the question then goes back to your mobile, um, the, the, the antenna setup, not the mobile radio. So it, what kind of antenna is it? Is it just the stock antenna that you have rigged up on the roof somehow or what, what have you put up there? So it is not an official GMRS uh, antenna. It's a MFJ seventeen fifty four, mm -hmm. um, and I just moved the uh, in the vertical just a little bit to, so I could get the SWR to come down better, and I just left it at that because I do eventually I'm going to be getting my license soon for AM, um, so I didn't want to completely change everything or cut it or anything. Mm. And you don't have an antenna analyzer? No, I don't. I've I've spent so much money recently. My wife I, would kill me if I buy yeah, more things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, put put a nano VNA on your Christmas list. Uh, Don, go ahead. You're going to say something. Well, I was going to say if you've got a second radio, what happens if you listen on oh, the input while you're talking on the 20 watt? Just listen with your hand down. So if I turn a H uh, my a little HT on. Mm -hmm. and transmit yeah i can hear it coming through that how strong is the signal does it have an s meter on that handheld it should uh, be should be pedal to the floor loud because it you know you're you're adjacent i think so yeah the radio that i was using for it is one of those quo shang radios with custom firmware on it and i think that one does have a little meter on it i actually don't remember what it was showing so dumb question, did you accidentally turn Tone Squelch off on the repeater channel? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you're not transmitting the tone, it won't activate the repeater. Yeah, and did did you have to have a tone to when you originally programmed it? Yes, it was uh, 103.5. Yeah, then then go check it for sure. Yeah, I guess I'll have to. I'm I've got to I've got to do a bunch of things to the radios because I honestly, while I was li w listening to your live stream, I just went ahead and reset the f the radio factory, reset it. So I was, I've got to go put all that back in now. But well, you why know. don't you go do it and then get back to us? We'll be here. Okay, so we'll yeah, be here for a couple of hours. You got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Does he live in Iceland? Is there a volcano in the way now? Is it wasn't there yesterday? <laughs> no, I'm in Florida. I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> yeah. A suggestion. Go ahead, suggestion. Um, the, my GMRS website will allow you to contact the repeater owner. It might be worth an email just to say, hey, has anything changed on the configuration? Uh, yeah, probably once he gets through all this to make sure tone's still on and set correctly. Yeah, I can do that. I think some of those guys are actually even on one of the uh, Facebook local groups for GMRS and stuff, so I could probably speak to them as well. Did you did you do a lot of waterproofing on the antenna connector uh, for the VHF UHF when you set it up? Not initially. No. I, well, I I did it wrong because I actually uh. put a little bit of tape in on the thread. Oh. Um. And then I looked into it. And I realized people wrap it, and that's when I went to HRO, and they gave me some wrap stuff. But it was working. Then. Well, yeah, but I mean, have you had a lot of rain since when it was working and not working, or snow, or no, ice? No, no, it's Florida. <laughs> it's only rain, but no, just maybe a drizzle I one night, but uh, not, I... not the other night. It was working the other night, and the rain was like Tuesday, and it was working two days ago. Hey Josh, can I uh, can I yeah. ask him a question? Yeah, go ahead. All right, because I couldn't. Help. I was not going to join Discord, but I, I heard these questions. So I oh yeah, myself. that's right. You said you were going to join us, and now here you are. Yeah, Look but, at that. We uh, drew I heard you these in. questions, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm sorry. What's your name? I, I I didn't catch it. My name's Zach. Right, Zach. Okay. So you tried. Just tuning to the repeater channel, uh, whatever channel, let's say it's channel 19, whatever it is. Have you tuned to just the GMRS channel equivalent with no tones and you still can't hear the repeater? No, he can hear it. Okay. So it's so he's concerned about transmitting power. 
Yeah, so literally uh, yesterday I was talking to people at about 11 o'clock and then I turned it off and went and did some things, came back at like 2, 3 o'clock and then I just couldn't get through to everybody. I could hear people, but every time I tried to throw out my call sign, nobody was getting back to me and then I realized that um, when nobody was on, I was pressing the PTT and I wasn't getting any tone back. Mm -hmm. So it was like I wasn't activating the repeater, but I did, I did nothing between that time. The only thing I could say is, barring any major problems with your antenna, which I, it could be, the only thing I could think of is that they have a split tone set up on that repeater, where the transmit tone is different from the receiving tone, and if they change that, you're not going to get through. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I should probably speak to somebody that's knows the repeater uh, and see if they have changed it but it just like it seems a bit weird that they would just do that out of the blue i, I would i, I would do. go ahead and go ahead and check all these other things first before you reach out to somebody because that way you'll have a little bit more information before you reach out and has uh you know uh yeah i mean way, i need to yeah. like i said i need to re i need to put it all back in there don't mm -hmm. i now so yeah there's yeah. there's one other thing though because the repeater space is so crowded don't um, I made the mistake as well where you think you're hearing one repeater and it's not the same one, oh. uh, especially in crowded areas where there's two repeaters on the same frequency. I I know it was the same repeater because I, uh, I've i gotten to know a couple of guys on there and I know their call signs. So when okay. So okay. I knew I knew it was the same repeater, there's actually like two or three guys that talk on it daily to each other. Wait, their GMRS operators are using their call sign. That's impossible. That's already we a, do it sometimes. A false, Josh. false flag, false flag. There's no <laughs> most most of the time they say it after the guys that are on it all the time. They'll say it after they finish their transmission or every ten minutes. But they'll just, just start kidding. talking to them. Yeah. yeah, I'm kidding. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go no, ahead. you're good. You're good. Yeah, you're a good. lot of I... the GMRS guys around here are hams, and they yeah. specifically will tell you that. But then they make fun of you if you like say whiskey queen, you know, or do any of that kind right. of stuff. <laughs> I, I'm sure I had another thought, but that's okay. Go off and and do your work there, and then come back to us and let let us know if it helped or if you're still having problems. But um, yeah, there's there's nothing worse than having a, a setup all configured and then something stops working. That is incredibly frustrating. So we we've all been through it. You, you'll get through it. Uh, just hang on. <laughs> So. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. And just one little quick question. If I do have the SWR meter on and I'm testing, should I still, theoretically, if it was working perfectly, still get my tone back? The SWR meter won't stop that, will it? No. Yeah, it's it's a part of the audio chain. Okay. All right. I'll go do all that now then. Thank you very much yeah. for your help. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And it's FM anyway, so you're, yeah, you're good. You're good. Everything's fine. All right, we'll take another shot at uh, anybody new here that uh, would like to say hi or ask a question. You guys, uh, you newcomers, or you get your priority questions answered first. So go ahead. All right, well, we can move right along. Uh, so I don't have Frank here, so I'm going to do my best. So, Frank, we, we're missing you tonight. <laughs> but uh, I see Gray Man Poda, but are there any YouTubers before Gray Man Poda that like to say hi? Did I miss anybody? I might have missed. There's a Chris guy, but I don't know that the Chris that's in here is him. I don't think it is. I normally, I, I look for him, but he's usually in my first. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Gray Man Poda. If anybody, by the way, we like to say hi to our YouTube friends that come out here. They're 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 in the they're in the content creator mines, mining up good content for you. So we like to say hi to all them. So we're gonna we're gonna stop to uh, Gray Man Poda first. How you doing, man? Oh, doing good, Josh. Just uh, staying busy. I was out shooting content deck today for the uh, Overlanding for Fun channel. What do you use? And, you use a uh, three three inch uh, Magnum yeah. turkey shot when you go out hunt for new content. When you go shoot new content? No, I do most of my hunting with an iPhone. Uh, tends okay. to yeah, okay. capture things pretty well. Okay. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, just uh, doing some of that. Went out last night and got the um, uh, the Meg Loop uh, antenna uh, 
Alpha Tennis sent over to me to do some testing with. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to do some content on that. I'm, tr I'm trying to, at least through the summertime, look at everything kind of with, with two lenses. Like, uh, you know, the, there's the technical side and the ham radio side of the mag loop, but I'm also looking at uh, kind of from the overlanding side and there's you know a whole group of us going out to uh the more expo mm -hmm. uh ham radio people to kind of introduce that into the overlanding community uh so something like a meg loop and a 705 in your campsite i think is a good good pair and you don't have to worry about trees or, or anything else and it's uh you can go to, gun, uh, as low as 80 meters and all the way up through 70 centimeters in one antenna and one wire. So um, just kind of looking at that and seeing how I can uh, put all that together and, 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 and try to film, you know, videos through both lenses. Right on. Yeah, a mag loop is really good for, well, just packability. They're really easy to pack around. The only downside, you know, is that they're extremely high Q. So you're constantly going in there and futzing around with that uh, with that capacitor as you play around with it, particularly in the lower bands. Uh, there is that, and mm -hmm. uh, I am I am I, I was playing around with that last night doing doing Poda and got got good performance with it. Uh, no no complaints, but uh, definitely the high Q and uh, I think if you're you're bouncing around, it might be a little problematic. My case doing a put activation, uh, right. I'm pretty much sitting on one frequency, so it wasn't wasn't that bad from from that standpoint. Right on, right on. Well, um, we look forward to hearing more. Uh, mag loops are always a an interesting video because you get people that come out there and like ah, they don't work for for nothing, or they're not very good at blah blah blah. They work. They they have their own pros and cons. Being high Q, they are pretty resilient to a lot of uh, line noise or interference and stuff like that. So that can be adv advantageous for some folks. But yeah, I know a guy who uh, has had some some playing around with mag loops, and he's in the chat, K6ARK, Adam. He's built his own mag loop that he's taken up to the, the summits and activated QRP for summits on the air and is just an antenna builder all around. But Adam, what's going on, man? Uh-oh. He's unmuted, but we don't hear him. Nope, he muted himself again. It's like you don't have a mic connected, Adam. Maybe. Uh-oh, he's typing now. Mic issue back in a second. All right. Speaking of Adam, K6ARK, I, uh, the, the thumbnail for this video, and I posted a little quick uh, reels to Instagram. I, hap I was taking my kids to a park, We've been trying to get my youngest, more like upper body mobile. Um, he he likes to run, but he I don't think he's doing enough like upper body stuff. So we found a park that has like monkey bars and lots of climby things. So we took him out there and we were playing around on the monkey bars. And I had my little go bag. Actually, I, this is one of my go bags, that, that Tom Bin bag. We'll probably dive into that in a little bit because I, I want to get my True SDX connected to my Android tablet. But... I had my True SDX, I had my uh, K6ARK microphone, and my K6ARK SMA end fed. Got that all hooked up. I was using a, a, a LiPo battery pack, uh, 3S LiPo, and I was getting 3 watts out on an end fed, and I made a 5.7 was my signal report back to a POTA in Oregon, which pretty dang good and that was on single sideband of all things so that nice. was a that was a nice contact yeah so what's been going on man how you doing oh pretty good had uh our search and rescue recertification last weekend so that was uh up in mammoth that was that went well and uh with the storm coming through right now uh have plans to go out and ski san jacinto tomorrow with some mountain rescue friends so that's uh that's on the the outdoor fun uh agenda i don't know that we'll make it to the summit tomorrow so i'm not sure i'm gonna do a soda activation but uh, mm -hmm. um i did post a video of uh the one i did up on san Jacinto, maybe um or i'm sorry on uh, uh mount baden powell 
about a month ago. So that was uh, that was a good time out there. Other than that, been uh, kind of getting stuff prepped for Hamvention. Uh, I've got some new paddles for the KH1 that I'm uh, prepping and ordering more PCBs for to to start getting some of those out and available. I got uh, oh probably ten or so prototypes out to people to play with, including Thomas K4 SWL, nice. um, and a couple of the other sort of early field testers of the KH1 and getting pretty good feedback so far. So should have some of those at Hamvention. And then beyond that, just working on some kits in the shop today, getting parts and bags so I can get stuff back in stock on Amazon. Well, say, save one for me so that I can buy it from you because I still have the stock paddle. They haven't sent me the upgraded one yet, and I, I would like to have another option. I, I've got uh, ARAs, yeah. which is ARAs is pretty nice if you're familiar with I know you're yeah. familiar with his. But uh, I would like I would like to try the touchpad the touchpad one. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They're um, for for anybody curious. I'll, I'll post a photo in the chat here in a minute. Yeah, please do. Um, but th they're based off of the the VK three IL pressure paddle design. It uses these resistive pressure sensors, uh, and they, it actually makes for a, a a paddle that's quite sensitive. It'll it'll trigger with a very light touch. Um, the, the one quirk to it is that um, you, you have to touch kind of at least in the general vicinity of the center of the pad. Uh, if you touch along the edge, it, it just it doesn't uh, it's not very sensitive along the edge of the, the resistive sensor. You got to be full, full touch. Got to give it the full pad is what you're saying. Well, you, gotta, you just have to hit the middle of the pad so, yeah. or right. somewhere near the middle of the pad. You can't hit the edge. I hear you. Right on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Going down the list is Mark. How's it going, Mark? Mark Hughes. Hey, hey Josh. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm good. It was a good chat. And uh, yeah, now we're, we're here after chatting. So hopefully we get some questions and help some people well, out. Well, I've actually got one for you and or your audience. Um, oh, okay. I need to make some videos for the Boondock Echo YouTube channel. However, I do not, do not, do not want to make... Hi, I'm Mark. Come buy this for me. Um, I want to make technical content that serves the amateur community. And then maybe if they learn about Boondock while watching it, great. So... What what do you recommend, or what do other people recommend? Uh, I will take a quick shot at this. The Boondock Echo is a thing where I believe you could crank out many 8 to 10 minute videos that walks through the how-to of using it and focus on one specific part of it with a really good title that hits exactly what the content is and an appropriate thumbnail. Thumbnails can kind of be hard with radio stuffs. Um, I think if you focus there on the how to use it, that will be very helpful for people. That would be great. Particularly all Thank that you, first sir. time setup stuff. I think that would be really valuable. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Anybody else want to have a thought on the Boondock Echo? Mm. I, I would echo that. So I, you know, I, I kind of unintentionally got into the antenna kit business <laughs> because I uh, posted some build videos on how to make tiny antenna matching units. And then um, I ended up designing a way to, to make that easier. And um, I've never done any advertising or real marketing other than just showing the stuff in use and showing you know um sh showing build instructions and and things like that and and that has done an amazing job of of showing people why they might be interested in it and why it might be useful to them and i think uh, like josh said if you focus on the the how to and what the what the pros and cons are what works what doesn't and just be clear and and uh honest about its strengths and weaknesses and what its capabilities are uh people will dig it and and they'll see where it could be a value to them, and, and they'll be interested in buying one. I appreciate it. Hey, real quick, Josh is showing your resistive paddles there on screen. Yeah. Uh, comment, Josh? Oh, yeah, go ahead, comment. Um, from the consumer side, um, I just, like say, I've been watching you, Mark, and uh, I think uh, you're doing exactly what, like, Adam has done because of Adam's work of, a lot of people have really rethought their transformers and 
uh, the venerable 240 size core is becoming a dinosaur because Adam decided to use a more efficient core that doesn't overheat and it works well. And I've been watching you. You've been sincere. And if there's one thing ham radio guys have is a very accurate BS detector and yes. guys that are just getting on YouTube to sell some gear are losing massive respect, not only amongst uh, YouTubers, but amongst ham radio operators. So kudos to you for just being sincere. That's going to do you really well. I appreciate that, Craig. Um, yeah, I, I actually made a video last week and I'm just not going to put it out because I, I yeah, I, I appreciate you, Craig. Yeah, I, I think Jody had also a really good point. They uh, they said, the first video should uh, wow me, show me the goods, get me interested. Actually, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. So if you're going to do like a series to get people like excited about something, it should just be like all those, just cover all the details really quickly, like boom, 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 demonstration, demonstration. Wow, 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 wow. Like give it the Billy Mays. But wait, there's more, right? Like hit him with all those. And then do video after video after video of how to do those things that you showed in the first video. Because, and here's here's the here's the 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 hack. If you're gonna do a video series about anything that you've shot content for, you can overlay the old videos on top of that as B-roll throughout the entire video to keep the interest of if I'm just talking at you like I'm doing right now and I'm not splicing in videos that I've done before on those short eight to 10 minute videos, they start to get boring. They start to draw on. It's just human nature to lose interest, even more so now because of reels and TikToks and all that other stuff. So if you do that really cool video where you show all those demonstrative bits, all that content that you've made, you can then splash in as B-roll on subsequent videos, which makes it super easy to start editing for. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Very good advice. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see. Going down the list. Um, who's next? Comment. Go ahead, comment. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but I definitely agree that his solution is a is a solution to a problem I don't know how to use. So yeah. him giving us more details would be great. Yeah, indeed. All right. Um, I think, am I not? I think I might have hit everybody. Oh, no. Prep Ham Paul, you're there. K5VOP. How you doing, man? Oh, maybe not. Maybe? Did Discord do a change or something like that? Because he's talking and I can't hear him. So your your mic's not set up or it lost connection. So there might have been an update. Go ahead and take a minute and get that sorted out and we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, is there anybody next? I think I might have got everybody. People are busy this week. Everybody's getting ready for Easter, apparently. They're hiding eggs. That's what they're doing. They're all in the backyard hiding, hiding the eggs. There he is. I How's mute. it going, man? Sorry, I muted the microphone. No, you're good. What's up? How's it going? Uh, it's going good. I just got back, picked up my Powerball and Texas Mega Millions tickets. So if I win, I will donate a 101 uh, MP for you to, to give away on your stream. Oh, we'll hold you to that. That's awesome. <laughs> Nothing Thank much. Um, I enjoyed the stream today with Randy. Thank you. It was good. Yeah, I, I, I get, uh, I get feedback from people when I when I do a video with Randy. Like, why are you doing a video with him? He, he creates all this division uh, within the within the amateur radio hobby because he's not a ham. It's almost like I shouldn't talk to him because he's not a ham. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's not wrong. Right. Because he, he's bringing up all valid points and it's almost as though he has become a conduit of all the people who you all hear about who went to a, a, a ham meeting and they they had a bad experience and they drop out of the hobby or they were on the air and they, they did something marginally wrong and upset somebody and then they get lambasted on the repeater it's almost like randy is a is a condensing pot for all those comments in his youtube videos and he handles it really well in almost a way that just makes people insane which for me just cracks me up because it's the malicious compliance you got to love the malicious malicious compliance of all of it um but i think his calmness drives people nuts oh it, it, it drives them through the roof i know but but i i, I think 
the, the thing that I center back on is there is a lot of gatekeeping that we have in the hobby. There's a lot of ham radio operators who feel that they they base themselves like a, a large part of who they are as a person in being knowledgeable at, about ham radio. And at some point in their life, or maybe this is always how they've been, they they veered off the path of the Gordon West of the world, right? So take Gordon West, extremely knowledgeable, is welcoming to a fault in, in so many, well, I mean, I don't know about a fault, but the wrong choice of words, just welcoming to an extreme point. I don't know of anybody that's more welcoming to hams. But then you, you take somebody that's just as knowledgeable about Gordon, but their message gets lost and and corrupted through their own attitudes that that get in there and and it becomes a, an ego thing and and all this other stuff I, I would like people to be more like gordon and be more like what he does and be positive and help people out then tie their egos up into it like it, it it doesn't need to be that way right and i i see randy is almost like the the whipping post for so many people and, and not that think they're anonymous that are that are on the YouTube's commenting on him, and I look at the I look at the comments and and he he turns into it he turns into the skid right he he pins the 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 worst sad ham comments to the top of all his videos, and people just go nuts after it he he's got the perfect <laughs> he's got the algorithm down because his views are through the roof on all his videos but it's it, it's because there is a part of our hobby that just can't kick this desire to be better than everybody like when they when they go out there like i'm the best ham i'm the most knowledgeable and buy gum i'm gonna tell everybody about it it's like that's not what this is about guys it's really not and it's and, and it, it never it never was and it never should continue to be that so that's why i like to give him a bit of a soapbox to rant on but go ahead somebody's gonna talk too no i, I think it's great um there were some comments that were great. Um, one of them, well, he said it a couple of times. It's just walkie-talkies. People need to lighten up. Let's have fun. And yeah. I, I, I do amateur radio. First, it started for e-coms, and then I, I got into their clubs and contests. And I do all sorts of things now, and I do it for fun. So life is so much easier. People just lighten up. Just enjoy whatever it is you like to do, whether it's GMRS, H, you know, ham. It doesn't matter. Just lighten up, have fun, and enjoy it. Yeah. Well said. And, and I mean, that's the technical side of it, too. Like, there, there what is it? There, there's this really funny, it, it's almost a meme where it's a dude in a mall and he's talking to a random guy or person. And somebody walks in between the camera and the, and the guy doing the interview. And the guy was kind of perturbed. And the dude he's talking to is kind of a mousy guy. And he just starts dropping all these, like, knowledge bombs, like... Never, never attribute malice in which it could just be ignorance to somebody that you're randomly experiencing. And I, I think that when people ask, <laughs> people go to like the QRZ forums and other places and they ask these questions and then people hit them with all these like this negativity. And I think it's because they're assuming malice. Um, and that could be because they've answered this question a thousand times and they're upset that it keeps coming up because they're not using that damn forum search engine which is a real thing it's a real thing use the search feature but th they assume so much they bring all this baggage in and they're like i'm going to set this baggage down and i'm going to air all grievances against this individual this innocent individual that, that just came to get a question and they start getting all this stuff dumped on them and so it's a lot of people assuming malice when oftentimes it's just complete ignorance it could even be ignorance of even knowing how to search a forum who uses forums these days right like it, it's it's almost a bygone era now that that forums still exist but we need to get better at that collectively yeah randy made one more comment i'll, I'll yeah. finish with this is no, um good. he said um I can't remember the exact words, but to paraphrase, it was basically it's the keyboard warriors, right? People think they can say whatever they, whatever's in their mind, yeah. No matter how bad or or negative or whatever, because they're behind a keyboard, and it's just sad that our society has come to that. But uh, I enjoyed it. I, his videos are great. They're they're hilarious and informative. Our club, because the because the price was cut, and a lot of us were watching not a Rubicon. We installed with with cooperation to the city. We installed a GMRS repeater along with our other repeaters. Oh, so it's nice. part of our communications and ecoms and community involvement. So why not? Yeah, well, I mean, it makes no sense. Why not use? Why not have another tool in your toolbox? So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Josh. No, great points. 
I, I, I agree, and I continue to bang on other radio services' drum because why not have more tools in the arsenal? I've talked multiple times about Mesh-tastic. You know, I love that. That is no... I mean, it's it's a part of the, the free band... Not free band, but, you know, a public radio service in the 1915... 915 megahertz space. But it's like, why not have more tools? Why not be Batman and have a little bat belt of, of arsenal of radio capabilities? Of course, why not? Gotta love it. Same with CB. That's why we need to have, oh my goodness, could you imagine? We we need to have repeaters on CB. Don, I don't know if I share that sentiment, but you know what? If somebody wants to do it, why not? I, I, I have no they, problem with that. They, they have FM now. I mean. That's, you know what, Don? You're right. Maybe it's, maybe that's all the, the, the FCC's long plan to give uh, repeaters to, uh, to 10 meters, uh, to 11 meters. That'd be funny. Could mm -hmm. you, could you imagine somebody, <laughs> could you imagine somebody with a huge amp? He's up on the repeater, and blows it up. <laughs> Jeez. Well, the, the, there is those three channels that are, are opposite mm -hmm. that are still in the band plan mm -hmm. that you could give us repeater channels. You know, if you, you pick like thirty-seven, say, and one of those channels below, I think you know the the delta channels they call. These to be used for um, remote control airplanes and things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th th what's funny is it, the more you look into radio, like the services of radio, there's a lot of options for just about everybody. Um, so you know, I I, I find that I, I find it interesting that we we get stuck on all these little things. But it's like you know, radio is supposed to be like a wide thing with lots of different options. But yeah. So uh, Josh, can I yeah. jump in here for a second? Absolutely. Why not? So I, I spent the last hour and a half trying to figure out Discord with my son because I am a new. Congratulations. I totally missed, I, I totally missed your uh, multiple calls for new people. So congratulations first. You figured it out. And second, your audio sounds really good. So you, the floor oh, is thanks. yours. So I, I'm kind of detecting a little blue on blue here. Like I, I literally got my um, call sign yesterday mm -hmm. and, and tuned in tonight. And hear people who are trying to talk to each other, whether it's ham radio or GMRS or some other method, like we're kind of all on the same team working toward the same end. Yes. And uh, it, I find it int interesting. That, that's uh, basically all I'll say. I do have a newbie question, but we've gone in this discussion way down a path. I don't want to take you off track but no, no. i will if you'll if you'll give me license i, I was going to come up for air anyway and take some other questions so go ahead so be, so middle-aged guy um ha have my license in a radio that shall not be named I, i'm kind of curious for you and this is going to go back many many years for a lot of people what what was the first time that people communicated on their radio? Like you, we're talking about very technical topics, which is blowing my mind here, watching your content and watching the stream and listen to people talk. But I'm kind of curious, like other than my local club, which I've joined and there's, there's Elmer's there that are there to help me. Um, was it just, was it two meters? Was it something else? Like, I'm kind of curious. Are, are you talking about like hallowed antiquity, like historically? Where no, 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 no. Like, like, like personal experience. Oh. This was, I was going to throw this out like as a story time at the very beginning before uh, mm -hmm. the discussion went down a rabbit hole in terms of what, you know, what, I don't think people sometimes remember the first time they communicated on a radio, to be honest. I, I did it uh, pr prior life. I talked on the radio my whole life, but not... Um, not in the ham radio or amateur radio. Yeah. Uh, good question. So l let me do this. Make sure. Did I get through all the YouTubers? Is there anybody I missed? Jump in really quick if I missed you. We'll let you go, and then we'll we'll take this question, because this is going to be an open panel kind of thing. Going once. Okay. All right. That was it. You said one. <laughs> you had one second. If anybody comes in, YouTuber, feel free to jump in and say something. It's fine. We'll give you. We'll give you the floor. Um, so I'll go first. I, I've talked about this in the past. I was a shortwave listener. I didn't come to I didn't come to amateur radio via uh, CB like a lot of folks did. I was exposed to amateur radio when I was in Boy Scouts. We had a scout assistant scoutmaster that had a ham radio handheld, and we were at a summer camp, and they were setting up a repeater. And I feel like he did a not great job in explaining what he was doing, but I think he was also kind of new when he was doing it. Um, now my angle of explaining radio to people have, has changed significantly from that experience, 
But um, yeah, I, I started out as a shortwave. I was just trying to get the best antenna I could up in the air, a long wire to be able to hear out, and I would, you know, snake it through the window and and listen. Uh, before I knew that that was not necessarily a good thing to do, I, I did that. And yeah, I, I, I love just, I, I still do. I love just listening. I always have the radio on or a radio on, listening, scanning, doing whatever. And it was only after I became licensed when I was working at Boeing uh, that I got uh, my amateur radio license. And then that was basically repeater time. I spent years talking on the repeater and being a part of the different repeater clicks, I would call them, communities. Uh, yeah, FT60 was my first radio, and that's kind of what got the whole bowl, ball rolling. And it was two things, APRS, APRS and Summits on the Air that got me into HF, and then that was it. It was like full throttle at that point. Because as much as I like VHF, UHF repeater stuff, I'm not a clicky kind of guy. I'm not a, a belonger. I'm not a follower. I'm a, you know, do my own kind of thing guy, and HF is where that's at for sure, so... Anybody else would like to share their stories? Go ahead. Sure. Don, go for it. I will. Yeah. I so I was in CB, and I got into CB when uh, in the 70s, actually. And for me, uh, I had been exposed, again, in Boy Scouts to radio. However, through the merit badge thing. But, however, nobody I knew had a radio. Um, and everybody's like, oh, right. this is way too expensive. Don't bother. And so I had I got into CB when I could, and my thrill on the CB was my dad had put up a antenna ground plane up way up on our roof, and to me I was on the south side of Fort Worth, and the greatest thing in the world was to call out and try to get somebody from the north side to come back to me and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that kind of got me into DX, mm. but. I, I want to relate this one experience because this was my first experience with AM radio. Okay. Uh, and, and you'll be familiar with it. So uh, they were having a net one night, and I'm listening on my handheld. Oh, net. Hey, I can check into the net. And I could not reach that sucker for nothing. I went on in the backyard. I climbed up on the fence. I did everything I could. I could not hit it. Yep. And to me, to this day, I still believe that we don't do enough to explain to technicians what it means, or, you know, the, 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 you got a handheld, but that does not mean you're going to get somebody to talk to. Yeah. And, you know, so that's why I call them the QRP of uh, VHF, UHF. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I agree. So. Anyway, sorry that, but no, yeah, that was my experience. I obviously, uh, you know, succeeded. And by the way, the clubs around Dallas Fort Worth are all wonderful, great. I, I, I was nothing but welcomed everywhere. Every one of the, I think, three or four clubs that I went to. Oh, that's awesome. I love to hear that. There's, there's nothing that makes me happier than when. You got a group of people that are entrenched, like they're 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 dripping in amateur radio life, and they still are welcoming to other people because they could they could get so deep down in the minutia that they're like, it's too hard for me to come up to the surface and bring this newcomer up to speed. Like I love that that they're welcoming. So that's that's amazing. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to share? Or, or not. I expected that to be a, a full thing. Adam, you want to dive in there? Yeah, I'll tell I'll put, a little story. I'll put story. him on the spot. Yeah, go for it, man. I'd love that. <laughs> so my, I, I don't remember my first uh, ham contact in general. It was, I'm sure, on two meters on a repeater and nothing too remarkable. But yeah. um, my first HF contact was a 10 meter contact as a technician. I operated as a technician on two meter repeaters kind of during the commute for, oh, probably three or four years before I decided to pursue a, a general class license to get on HF. Cause I was just having fun. You know, it was, it was working well for me and, and I enjoyed the chat with the guys, same guys every morning and in the afternoon on the way home from work. And, uh, I ended up picking up a Radio Shack HTX-10, which is a little 25-watt, 10-meter only <laughs> right single on. sideband yeah, single side band transceiver and built a 10-meter dipole for it. And this was not during the peak of the solar cycle, so 10 meters was 
not consistently open. And I also just didn't really understand propagation well enough to know what time of day to operate and stuff like that to increase my odds. Uh -huh. And uh, one day I was tinkering around with the radio. It was out on the hanging, you know, the antenna was hanging from the the kind of awning on the, the front porch and tuning around. And I hear this call sign calling CQ. And he sounded kind of like a chipmunk. Uh, you know, the, the audio was, was weird because I was off frequency and didn't realize how to tune that radio to zero beat. So I called oh, him back. Oh, it's a 10 meter. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that radio has like a coarse tuning knob and then a fine tuning knob that you turn back and forth to get, you know, right on to the, to the zero beat and, and align your, your frequency to theirs. I didn't understand how to use that that fine tuning knob, so so I call him back, and he he replies. He yeah, he says, yeah, it sounds like you're a little bit off frequency. And I said, well, this is you know my first HF contact, and I don't really know how to use this radio. And he came back and said, well, you know what radio are you using? I told him, and he said, oh, that one's got this little fine tune knob. So look for the one that says fine next to it and adjust that. And, I adjusted it, and sure enough, his, his voice came back to normal. And uh, we completed the contact. He sent me, I think, what was likely my first QSL card, which I still have. And uh, just the, the way that he was uh, so helpful and friendly and kind of coached me through the, the contact was, was a really awesome thing. And being able to, you know, to make a contact with someone from San Diego to Chicago with just a little piece of wire on my front deck was what got me hooked and pushed me down that road of, of getting the, the general and soon after the extra license and really getting into HF. So, so yeah, I, beyond that, you know, to kind of go back to the original thought and the question, I, I was kind of reading between the lines and thinking, you know, part of this is probably asking how do you find your 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 spot in the hobby? How do you find what you like to do or want to do and and where you're going to spend your time in the hobby? And uh, I think the the key to that is to to kind of express to others that are in the hobby what what are your other interests? What are the kinds of things that that you think sound interesting and and if you express that to others, they'll help you get into it and help you you try it out and and figure out you know what you like and and what you really want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so I'm sorry who who asked the the, the question did that? Yeah, oh, that was that was. Go ahead. Oh, we lost you. <laughs> yeah, the PTT buttons uh, uh suck sometimes. Yeah, sorry. It was I was typing the the letter multiple times in the chat. No, I appreciate it. Like, uh, I, I have some goals for what I'm doing. Good. Um, uh, if I can achieve them, we'll see. So I appreciate all the comments and the feedback, uh, from, uh, from you guys and in the chat. So, uh, look, looking forward to, uh, working with my local club and, uh, getting there. Yeah. So I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll come back to the story in a second, but let me just say, uh, remember that amateur radio, actually all radio, is a marathon, not a sprint, right? You you have plenty of time, you know. Assuming all things considered, uh, you you can you can get to where you want to be. Um, just take your time, set the goals appropriately, budget. Budget is a huge thing. Uh, nobody should go broke with radio of any kind. So yeah, take your time. You'll you'll find your way, it, and it's good because you learn a lot in the process. I, I tell you what, uh, I've said this multiple times. I, I have a degree, and arguably my degree that I have, I, I find that I, my radio stuff, obviously because of my YouTube channel and all that other stuff, but it has come up multiple times in my engineering profession outside of my you know actual schooling degree that has served me in ways that like I can't even really quantify. And it costs me nothing other than the radios I buy and enjoying the hobby. So it's rare that you get a hobby that can pay you back, particularly in a technical field. And there are multiple technical related fields in, uh, in that, that amateur radio touches upon that you could you could literally make a career out of getting super knowledgeable about the amateur radio 
space and and understanding the technical aspects of it and you can learn it from this sandbox that that we have access to to be able to get more information more capable uh using radio frequencies so yeah let's go to the story go ahead story so my my life story oh we don't have time for a life story that that was a joke josh come on now (laughs) Um, but i started civil air patrol in 89 and you had to be proficient in radio so i had a a 2gat from icom icg 2gat um so that's where i started i didn't actually get my amateur radios license until 2021 Mm -hmm. and oh the other thing that i had operated in civil air patrol was a hot water 18 h uh, heath kit on 80 meters um, under their license and i had no clue what i was doing other than i tuned the antenna and it worked so fast forward 30 years uh, roughly and because i was in civil air patrol for about six years as a 18 and then older but i had expectations of amateur radio being like civil air patrol does a lot of two meter stuff and then you know some 80 meters 40 meters but but i had no clue and to to your point budget is everything um and it is definitely a marathon my first year was i'm listening to josh what's the next new thing oh my gosh um um and you can't be uh, squirreled down every little rabbit hole now you can research those squirrel moments but figure out <clears throat> you, you need to kind of figure out your five-year plan and that turns into your one-year plan real quick but <laughs> we won't get into that right and then your 10-year plan turns into your two-year plan and uh but you know if you invest right um and i've, I've got nothing but used equipment Um, I have good, good friends and, uh, people, silent keys and things like that. And I've picked up good used equipment for very reasonable prices. Um, and that's the thing about the hobby. If you've got a good club with good friends around you, they'll help advise you. And, and sometimes they'll be a little positive and sometimes they'll be a little negative, but you know, you figure it out and you walk it as you go. But I didn't have any idea who Adam K six A R K was, and now I follow him and Smoke and Ape and and Josh and and it's to figure out what next antenna project or the QRP Labs next thing that's going to hit the market. Or I'm not interested in an ICOM big radio, the next big radio, because I've. I've got a 7600 sitting in there that, that it, you know, I, I don't need that. I got that as a silent key uh, super deal. And, you know, these things will come if you're patient and you get just enough to satisfy the the itch over here. And it will come. It's, it's kind of like the baseball thing. If you build it, it will come Mm -hmm. and you'll figure out what your likes and don't likes and, and you'll make a mistake, but it's not a big enough mistake in the hobby. You can, you can sell equipment for what you paid for it. If it still works. Um, usually, you know, we we can't burn radios up and and expect them to work the next day. And, but yeah, just as some advice, just like Josh said, it's a marathon. What you think you want today um, I wound up with an FTM 100 in my first year. I sold it. It's like, oh, that's not enough radio. Guess what? It's mounted back in my truck. Same <laughs> exact radio. <laughs> nice, nice. Because I nice. love that radio. Yeah. Um, FTM 400. I had one of those. I wish I had it back, it, but I'm not going to go spending that kind of money because I don't need it. So a- anyway, that the, the the gist of it is, is Josh is right on. When he says it's a marathon, take your time. Right. Um, and and I, basically, I've got nothing but Yesu and and ICOM equipment for very reasonable prices and good hand fest deals. And 
and I love making stuff. So that's where I, that's where my passion in the hobby is. So of course I like sitting out, I shoot, man. I sat out for six hours last Saturday doing POTA with an oh, IC703. Good for you. And it was fun stuff, but there's so many things. Yeah. So uh, those are all really good points, but you know, let, let's, let's see if we can hit upon some of these. Cause I, I do have a question I want to come back to, but, um, Interstellar Starman says this is a rich man's hobby. So that's the cool thing about this. I almost look at it kind of like boating. If all you have is yacht dreams and champagne wishes and all that, then yeah, it's a super rich man's hobby. You you would need tens of thousands of dollars to put up a really big antenna system with a huge tower and all that stuff. But most people aren't doing that. Most people are not doing that straight up. So for the I'm price, not. Yeah, mo most people that's what I'm saying, most hams aren't. So for the price of, you know, $18 for a a Baofeng, right? Like a an Amazon Baofeng, uh you you're in the hobby. There you go. You're you're a part of the hobby. You're you're neither less of a ham, more of a ham, etc. unless you create these arbitrary ego things in your own head. But case in point, I started out talking about the True SDX. Uh I I got I got this one. In fact, if you're if you're coming to the camp out, I've got three or more of his thre uh, friends that I'm going to be giving away to the people that come to the camp out. If you didn't get in the camp out, it's too late to join right now. But that's a $135 radio that I made a contact with to Oregon over voice using that little green microphone that you see next to it. $135 with an, uh, an appropriate wire antenna. I, I don't know. I don't remember what I paid for Adam's kit, but you could you could build your own kit. You, there's There's plenty of designs on the internet. I will say this, and I think this gets lost in translation a lot. Amateur radio becomes expensive if you are unwilling to do the work yourself. If you want to subcontract out that work to another company or another human being to make a radio for you, make an antenna for you, then yes, you're going to pay the prices for their time because it's a technical hobby. Of course, you're going to have to pay for that. But that's the cool thing about this hobby versus many other hobbies is that you can build a lot of this stuff yourself and that's where you can save a ton of money. And so that's again, where going back to this simple true SDX, not the best radio, but definitely probably the Baofeng of HF radios. I can make contacts with that, no problem. And if you wanted to build this a kit, you can do that too. It, it, it's totally possible and you can build this yourself. Yeah. So how do you get started cheaply on digital? It's probably the true SDX. It might also be the uh, QRP Labs. I, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily ready to dip into all that yet, but uh, I do have it. Where is it? There it is. There's, that's the guy. The, the, the QDX digital transmitter here, that is $69. And uh, you can get an include. That's just the kit. Uh, you pay a little bit more for the aluminum enclosure. You can also pay someone to build it for you. Right. And that'll take you to the hundred dollar mark, basically. And they'll ship it to you. And you got a working five watt radio to do what I'm doing right here on this screen. You'll be able to do digital modes and see all these little transmission marks. Now, sure, I'm I'm transmitting at a hundred watts right now, but uh yeah, you, you could do this with a computer, a laptop or whatever in the field or even at your home, no problem, for relatively inexpensive. Now, again, the goal for tonight, and I don't know that we'll, hopefully we have the time, but I, I would like to be able to connect this radio to my Android tablet and do some uh, FT8 with it, but we'll see how we go because we've got some good questions and other stuff coming in. So I, I want to go back uh, because we, we were taking open questions and we got a good one on YouTube. So I'm going to go all, I'm going to scroll all the way back up the chat. By the way, I appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with us. Oh my gosh, it's so far back. Uh, let's see. Mm, let's see. Hey, uh, thanks to Turk. Hey, Josh, wanted to say thank you for helping me get into the hobby. At 15 years old, I got my amateur extra ticket in under a year from my tech. Your videos are what kept me going. Well, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. So let's see. Um, question. Your 10-meter potavid finally pushed me to get my tech after years of lurking. Should I buy a 10-meter radio or VHF, or sorry, UHF, VHF mobile first? Never made a contact and only have a Chinese HD. See, this is a really tough question. So, Logan, I hope you're still watching because that was a while ago. That was uh, almost an hour ago. Jeez, th that question came in a, a while ago. So, apologies. We get a lot of uh, stuff to cover in the beginning. But if you're still watching, you know, I hope you come back and everybody else watching this might be helpful. Is Frank in negotiations with you right now? 
Frank? For, what mean? Yeah, Frank, because he, he's not here. He's he's awesome on your on your. You, uh, you don't understand that. No, I, I I think he's busy. I he didn't mention it, so I, I I'm assuming he's just busy. But um, also, we had a ton of stuff to cover in the beginning here. We again, join us on the Discord. You get your questions answered first. So Logan, you would have gotten your question answered a lot earlier if you join us over there. But um, regardless, so <laughs> favorite amateur radio question. What is the answer? It depends. So if you if you really like doing 10 meter long distance contacts, then this is the time that you should probably get a 10 meter radio because the, the solar cycle is up. It's a high solar cycle, which we love. We're going to have that through about 2025, 2026. You'll be able to make really long distance contacts and they'll be really, really fun. With that said, if you have local repeaters and you can communicate with lots of people, you might enjoy the repeater scene a little bit more. If you're a bit of a social butterfly where you like to talk to people on the drive time and do all that fun stuff and, and meet up with people on radio, then VHF, UHF might be a better solution for you. If you're purely in it for those long distance contacts and you like to, the idea of parks on the air, then a 10 meter radio is probably going to be better for you. I will say, though, that if you are if you're going to drop the cash on a 10 meter radio, you might want to consider spending a little bit more money and get yourself something that's multiband. So like a Shegu G90 or a Yesu FT891 will be a very good option that will, will last you for uh, many years. You could just stay there your entire ham career, um, or you could, you could upgrade to something else, but it's always going to be valuable and useful. So, yeah, there's that. Hey, Josh, yeah. I'm going to dog pile on you. My 10 watts out of my IC703 is plenty to make DX contacts when things are working and sure. propagation's working for you. Yeah, yeah So absolutely. 20 watt Zygu G90 sounds like the perfect radio for starting out because it's got a waterfall and everything. Yeah. Uh, how do I adjust the ALC? There's one I'm looking for that was about radials. We got Adam here, so I want to try and get to them. Where was it? Okay, Lo uh, Logan. Where was Logan's question? Shoot. It's tough to do this sometimes on my own. <laughs> too, many, too many people. Too many questions now. Too many comments. Oh, it was about radials, and I'm, I think I lost it. If you're still here, repost the question about radials, because we got to go back. So, Josh, a, a quick note on your 10-meter POTA video for that, I think it was an Anytone rig or something. Mm -hmm. I forget what you were testing. And uh, and my first HF contact. One of the guys you made contact with in that video was the guy who I made my first HF contact with. No way. With. Was yeah, it really? Yeah, it totally was. And, yeah, N9NUQ. And you, you had like an extended chat with him, and he's just like a genuinely super friendly, nice guy. So, um, so you might go back and take a look at that one. That has the patches on the jacket? That might have been it. I, I forget the details of it, but uh, he was in Chicago, and I remember he had like an extended... Yes. I think he was asking about the rig or something, and uh, just a super cool dude. Very helpful and, and friendly and awesome guy. Yeah, I think that might be the same guy. Yeah, that was that was a cool contact. And uh, I actually ended up talking with him, and I, we talked about the jacket a little bit and, and some of the stuff he worked on. It was it was really cool. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, his name his name's Roberto Soto. Uh, yep. is his name Roberto. That so, sounds right. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was because he's the Ele he had Elecraft radio. He, he was talking on the so. Elecraft. Yeah. I think I, I think that's yeah I think I remember that exactly, that's excellent. That's great. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was pretty. Yeah. When I was watching that video, I heard his call sign. I was like, "That sounds familiar," and I looked it up, and sure enough, I was like, ah, that's, "That's the guy." <laughs> I'm bummed out because I missed something about radials. Somebody was asking if they should put radials under their antenna, and they didn't need them before. Oh wait, wait. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, so George, I think he's relaying the question second party because I think that individual, I, I, I can't find the question now. There's too many chats. But uh, question about radials had something to do with using aluminum screen instead of radials, I think. I think, yeah, so 
Um, first, you should use radials when your antenna needs radials, and it's generally, if you just have a vertical like a ham stick or some kind of loaded vertical, you probably do need some kind of radial system under it, unless you're using like a car as the other side of the antenna. Um, a lot of people are using the screen door material, right? And they're getting good results out of that. And, and why is that? Uh, it's because of the, the skin effect of having all those little wires that, that mesh up to a very large wire, if you think about it. And that functions as the other side of the antenna, you know, to be able to help you get your RF out there. Yes, the screen door material is fantastic. A lot of this, though, for anybody who's like, should I use 16 radials, 160 radials, 20 radials, 30 radials? A lot of it comes from experimentation, right? Wire's cheap. It, it's not, you can go to Home Depot and you can pick up, you know, wire that would be suitable in a lot of cases for this. Some of this is just experiment. You tell me. There are, you know, semi, like, educational or scientific documentation that's created from hams talking about radials and how many radials you should use. There is a break-even point that somebody has calculated. I think it's in the area of 100 plus radials, but you probably don't need that for what you're doing. I would argue that a one-wire radial is not necessarily going to be the best solution for you, particularly at home, but you can you can add bundles of wires together to be able to get you more of that effect and and it'll do well for you it'll do really well i don't know uh, adam do you have anything to add about radials if you want to go down that road oh he's still muted so he might have stepped away yeah sorry you caught me off guard there yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> um it, it depends on the antenna and the antenna system some some uh, rely more on a, a radial system than others, so so I I, I hate to to go back to that, but it depends. <laughs> you know, if it's yeah. a, if it's a quarter, if it's a quarter wave vertical or a vertical monopole in some way, or um, you know, an, a non resonant uh, wire and fed random wire, those are the ones that are going to benefit the most from from uh, from having a good set of radials. But, uh, you know, if you're running a dipole, obviously, you know, you, you don't need a set of radials for your dipole because it's, it's got it kind of built in. Yep. Well said. Brian says, I know this is a ham chat, but can you do a CB question? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Just make sure you put question in there at Ham Radio Crash Course and we'll, we'll see it. But sure, why not? We'll, we'll do our best at that. Uh, question, waiting for my FTDX10 to get delivered, what is your go-to recommendation for permanent HF antenna? Looking at getting 80 through 10 watts N-fed halfway for POTA and travel, just not a good permanent recommendation. So, okay, what is your recommendation for, so permanent HF antenna, but also portable <laughs> is kind of what they're saying. Um. And needs an NFED half wave. I, so I think he's saying he. I think he's saying he he's got an NFED hat or wants an NFED half wave for portable stuff, but isn't sure what to set up at home. Oh. And and uh, to me, it largely depends on what your you know what's what are your options there, space and and land wise. And um, if you're budget. yeah, and if your goal is just simple wire multiband uh, a big doublet or a, a you know an 80 meter or 100, 160 meter loop up as high as you can get it is going to do pretty well for you if you got the room 100% so if you can run a big doublet or a big full wave loop that'd be great there's numerous people that are saying DX commander sure DX commander would be good as a permanent antenna uh, as far as portable yeah an infant half wave would be good and this is all highly predicated on how much you want to spend. Oddly enough, uh, doing a full wave loop or a nice doublet, those are relatively inexpensive antennas. And you, you will do very well if you, if you take the time and set it up right and get it up to an appropriate height. So, yeah. All right. Uh, is the signature series on the DX Commander, it's more, it's more permanent, right? 
Uh, I, I argue that they're all pretty portable. They're actually really easy to take portable. Uh, but once you put down those the Jubilee clips uh, on the on the mass, then then they become a little bit more permanent because you have to like untwist them and take down all the elements and roll them up and all that stuff. So yeah, it, it depends on what you what you mean by portable, like how much time it would take. But every time I've taken the DX Commander up against end fed half waves and other things, the DX Commander has done a fantastic job. So. Yeah, it's about how much time you want to spend. Oftentimes, you can get an NFED half wave up in the in the course of like a couple of minutes and get them get beyond the air in like no time. Uh, DX Commander takes considerably more time than that, from my point of view. Uh, Ed has an interesting question: How can you adjust your ALC when working FL Digi? Is it like WSJTX? I'm having a problem. I'm not sure if there might be a bug in the latest software. So uh, FL Digi, generally you control your ALC with the mic gain. You didn't mention what you were doing. So if it's digital modes, I don't know. Somebody's got a weird digital or uh, weird voice thing going on with their microphone. You want to mute until you get that sorted out. So you, you're, you're going to vary that with mic gain um, or more likely than not, FL Digi is this there to like route the plumbing between the USB port and whatever application you're running. So then when you're in the application, you would probably control your ALC versus the audio signal that you're putting into that application. So WSJTX, you would still use the slider. Uh, FT8, still use the slider. Uh, even WinLink, you'd still use the slider or whatever it was you were doing. Um, I'll come back to Discord in a second. We'll take this last one. Hi, all trying to get my 7300 set up with the Evolve 3 crap top. We call that the Jenkopotamus, but crap top works too. Won't pick up audio from or to the radio. Matched COM ports and baud rates, WSJTX command sends, and then it got cut, so that was on Discord. Sends such transmit but fires up errors. Any ideas? Okay, so there's a couple of things there. Uh, so first, under the audio tab, you would need to identify the right microphone and speaker it you didn't mention that you just mentioned com ports and baud rates which is that's cat control that's not the audio in and out so you have to make sure you have that set up correctly now if you're getting random usb dropouts then there's like a couple of things that come to mind the first is you know make sure you got a good cable i don't want to assume oh 7300 so you have an ab cable uh, you, you might need to have a choke on the antenna side into your radio put a good common mode choke right there and you may want to add a toroid or two onto the usb cable as well you shouldn't get a lot of stray rf um, my guess is that you might be getting rf back into the shack from your radio so and fed half waves nine to one random wires potentially but if you have a really good match you, you're going to be less likely to get that stray rf if you have an end fed half wave and you're still picking up noise or not noise but stuff coming back down the usb or into the antenna through the radio to the usb you might want to uh, drop a radial off the off your nfed half wave or nine to one uh, transformer if you're doing a random wire to to bleed some of that off generally been my experience okay uh let's go back to the to the core central point of this entire after chat is there anybody here that is new on Discord that would like to say hi or ask a question. And that goes uh, just as well for the voice people or the people that are in the chat. So it looks like Crazy Mike, you are said you are. Uh, anyone else in the voice chat that's new here for the first time and like to say hi or ask a question? Go ahead. Hey, is my mic working? Yep, it's working, man. Go for it. And now it's not. <laughs> so go ahead, take a second. Get that PTT button squarely underhand. You're muted. You muted yourself. Uh-oh. Crazy Mike's got crazy problems right now. There he is. Is he back? Hey, there I am. I think uh, I was highlighted on the microphone button when I pressed my space bar as the PPT. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, some people set the left control as their PTT button. 
Uh, that seems to work a little bit better than the space bar. But yeah, man, we hear you. What's going on? Yeah, I was the one clicking in earlier. Every time I typed in my message and hit space, it hit the PPT. Yeah, that's why they they, they changed it to something else because space bars a mm, not not the best way. But yeah, what's what's going on? Do you want to say hi or ask a question? Go for it. Yeah, I'm a noob here, so I'm figuring this Discord thing out. But what I'm doing is I have an arcade, a full size arcade, and I'm trying to get my SDR hooked up to it to run like an arcade game, but use the controllers to tune in my receive. Uh, okay, okay. So you have an arcade cabinet? Like what, what kind of cabinet are we talking about? It's a Legends Ultimate Arcade and it has an HDMI input you can switch to and you can MIDI control the uh, MIDI map the controllers to your software. So I'm trying to MIDI map my spinners to my VFO on my receive on my SDR software. Okay. So right off the bat, you're probably going to be better off instead of interfacing the arcade directly to the radio, like going through a Raspberry Pi is my guess. So if you had like a Raspberry Pi that was configured to connect to the radio and you had that all sorted out, then you probably could do some kind of mapping for controls to the arcade cabinet um, over the GPIO pins or something along those lines. But I swear this is a, a whole new one for me. I've never, I've never had anybody ask me how to interface an arcade cabinet. Uh, with that said, MIDI, I think, I think you can do some stuff with MIDI to be able to transverse that. That's a wild one. Does anybody in the chat have any ideas on that? Okay, I'm using Dragon OS image on oh. my PC. Okay. But I have uh, Dragon OS has Spark SDR in it, and it'll let you MIDI map. Okay. But I had a few other ideas. I'm trying to figure this out right now. I also have a Raspberry Pi hook to it running. Uh, uh, Raspberry Pi MAME OS, but uh, it's just something I'm working on. I thought it was kind of fun because I'm taking an arcade and hooking an SDR in it. Okay, so uh, I, I just I just did a shot in the dark and I, I typed in uh, FL Rig and MIDI controller into Google, and it looks like there's a guy. So don't don't let this fool you. This is a MIDI device. It's a it's a DJ turntable type control, but that's that's full MIDI. So it looks like they're using MIDI into an SDR transceiver for sound VFO antenna rotator modes and more. Okay, I'm gonna drop this in the uh, in the Discord chat. So if you go to hashtag livestream, you'll see it. Um, yeah, so it, it sounds like it's possible because MIDI MIDI is a pretty universal standard, but it seems like they did have to do some scripting to be able to map stuff. Yes, they did have to do scripting to map stuff. But that would be the way to do it. Yeah, he's even got a video. I'm just trying to drop this out there as an idea, something I'm playing with, but I thought it'd be interesting for other people to get this kind of idea in their head. Um, there is something oh. you could search for for a mm -hmm. FL Studio Arcade. It's a, a audio dog. Uh, it's a Almost digital a audio workstation, but they made an April 1st spoof about an arcade made with FL Studio. That'll give you the idea of what I'm thinking. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, yeah, I, I pulled it up. FL Arcade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the one. That's what I want to do, but with uh, something like uh, Hercules SDR. Yeah, so let me ask you, like, uh, what radio are we talking about? What is the radio you're going to interface with this? I'm currently using an SDR RTL version 4 with what I got, but I'd like to get a Hercules and play with some uh, FT8 stuff. So uh, you might have an easier time if you get uh, a Hermes Light. The Hermes Light, it seemed like the guy that I just dropped the link for, 
uh, he has a video right here. The Hermes light will work off of MIDI. Uh, using your Dragon OS would probably be just fine, assuming you have an SDR software that will allow MIDI control. And if you do USB over, is it USB over MIDI? So if it's, is it a USB connection for the controls or are they full serial? Oh yeah, it's USB. And oh. I don't have to use MIDI. There's lots of options to use. No, this uh, this will work. Starting to figure this out, and yeah, it's the Hermes I was talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you put the Hermes light in there, and the screen for the cabinet is like a screen connected to the to the Dragon OS, and you're running some kind of Linux SDR uh, software, you can definitely control it with MIDI. Yeah, th this should be easy. Oh, yeah. uh, well, this it'll take time, but yes, it, 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 it's a straightforward input, process. Yeah, yeah. And it has uh, the controllers work off a uh, USB connected oh. to the computer. Yeah, th th this, this is not going to be that hard to do. You should be able to do this. Uh, I, I take the link, the TRX and Shack MIDI controller, and go watch his video for the setup. I bet you it would yield a lot of information for you. Hey, can I ask about one other thing that I'm kind of into right now? So far, you've been great with questions, so why not? Let's take another one. <laughs> Man, I don't have my hand license, so I can't transmit. You son of a bitch. I've been not just kidding. To the, uh, ghost. Oh, let me think of what the damn name is. Uh, don't dox yourself. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> GhostNet from mm -hmm. the S2 YouTube channel. Ah, uh, all right. Right on. I've been using my SDR Spark to capture the digital transmissions from the GhostNet. I thought right on. it was pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, man. Uh, Like any, any path that leads you to more radio is a good path, right? If that takes you to ham radio or whatever, like we're all on board with that. So right on. That's super cool. I just thought I'd throw out a couple of uh, out of the ballpark ideas I've been playing with. I need to get my ham license so I can actually get out there and uh, get involved. You know, it'd be you know, it'd be great is if uh, you you were able to do like uh, key sequences that that would change bands. So if you could like do a, a sure you can to, to to change bands and it would immediately go to like eighty meter or no, if you did a sure you can, it took you right to seven point. Two zero zero megahertz. That would be perfect if you did it. Like oh, just the cheat code. Sure, you can would take you right to seven point two hundred megahertz. <laughs> well, That'd my ultimate perfect. goal with that arcade is to build it out as if ham radio was a video game. Okay. Yeah, I, I love where you're going with this. Yeah, absolutely. Go nuts. And then you can put little quests, like little side quests. Yeah, it would be great. I love it. We we can order a new uh skins for the outside new images for the outside of the arcade i'd love to come up with some uh hermes uh images i could put on there oh yeah you should man that's awesome sdr has so many good visuals with the waterfall and all that it'd be great for an arcade that would be good yeah i love it well thank you for sharing that very good all right. Hey, I think somebody ought to look into those uh, ultimate arcade units and see about uh, doing a conversion to their SDR. It might be something people are interested in. If I had the space, I would do that in a heartbeat. Uh, I think my wife would kill me if I, I'm like, well, honey, this is our new uh, living room decoration. It's an ultimate arcade cabinet that's connected to a, a software-defined radio. I think she'd shoot me. <laughs> You uh, know, if you put a uh, picture in picture TV in there, you could uh, either play video games or watch YouTube while you were uh, watching the signal from your SDR. Why not, man? Why not? Put a little, little put a little Bluetooth, like a little uh, one of my the the uh, micro center special keyboards. This guy put one of these keyboards in the mix right there and you, you're good, man. You can do whatever you want then at that point. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm actually like really on board with that, but I need, I need way more space to be able to accommodate all that. I love that concept though. It's a good idea. Maybe you should sell some of your radio stuff to me for cheap. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. On your, in your dreams, man. <laughs> I love all my, well, no, there, there are some. It'll there... make room for an arcade. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's okay. I have I have sequestered myself in appropriate spaces that don't affect my wife. 
but an arcade cabinet deserves to be the center point, the center point of of a living room or or a you know a, a rumpus room or whatever the hell that needs to be in the family space. I've annexed myself to, to quiet spaces that no one tread, uh, but an arcade cabinet, come on. I got to put that you know, front you center. You say that my arcade is taken apart in the middle of the living room with raspberry pies and computers surrounding it. And I don't know how many wires connected to it. I they love it. They all have to do with it right now. Uh, you're, you're the, you're the favorite person in the house right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. That was a good question. So KK7JEV asks, can a multi-band hex beam radiate on multiple elements at once, or does only the dedicated element for the band I am transmitting on radiate? Not only do the other wires radiate simultaneously, but you could use many radios on the same antenna and radiate all them wires at the same time if you use something like a triplexer or a pentaplexer and the appropriate band pass filters for that radio am i blowing your minds well let me let me show you what i'm talking about i this is a a great thing we, we've covered this many times but uh let me let me show you this let me get this out of the way hold on Boop. so if uh if i search for pentaplexer yeah, and you have to put the picture of the uh, buddy hex in the in the background. Yeah, I should, right? Oh, this website's there. You go. So th this device, okay. Look at this bottom. It says ant. That's your antenna connection. So take the buddy hex, right? One of our favorite portable antennas ever of all time, forever. Plug the buddy hex one coax. So that one coax connects to five. Actually, it's it's more than that, right? 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6. Is that 5? Okay. I can't count anymore, apparently. But yeah, you connect that up to that antenna, and then you can break that out to separate coax feeds for separate radios that are all operating on those discriminant bands. They can't operate outside those bands. So if you're on 28 megahertz, you're doing 10 meters. 24, you're doing 12. 21, 15, etc. right? And then you, you generally will need uh, band pass filters for this unit because all that cross talk of all those other radios in a close location will cause a bit of chaos on your receiver. So you highly recommend you have bandpass filters, but you can absolutely, absolutely use one hex beam to radiate on multiple bands simultaneously. Simultaneously, no question, no problem. And it's great. It's what you should do on field day. It's a wonderful space-saving situation. Josh, I just dropped this in the chat. Oh, what just happened to my, I just killed my websites? There we go. It's back. Oh, James so, just dropped a hot a hot banger here, so let me So my buddy that I am going to Arkansas to play on the solar eclipse day uh for the ten hour deal. Yeah. He just uh, got a buddy hex, the tripod, and then it's all your fault, by the way. No. Um then, I assume uh, no blame. This... Oh, okay. Well, we'll take that. But uh, yeah, your your video definitely rolled him down this path. But uh, so we've got 20, 15, and 10. I think he's got 40 bandpass filter as well, which I don't know. That won't work. But well, you you put up a long wire for 40, and you still want you yeah, still I... want you still want the bandpass isolation. Oh yeah, yeah. You're exactly right there. Yeah. Um, and so we're gonna play for as long as we can on that Monday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's going to be a good time. I hope everybody gets down there and does some amateur radio stuff. Uh, I likely will be... So the good news about the, the Eclipse, and I, I should just pull that back up because I think I still have the website live. I think I do. Yep, maybe. Get out of there. Yeah. So the Hamsai Festivals of Eclipse Ionospheric Science... Uh, that is a 10-hour event, right? So check this out. What you want to do is any band between 160 meters and 6 meters get on FT8 or FT4 or single sideband. But digital modes are good because there's a stickiness to it. There's actual data that you can look up after the fact. And just transmit throughout that entire period. Make as many contacts as you can 
leading up to the eclipse and after the eclipse. And that all is useful for science. So if you got nothing else your radio's doing, uh, maybe, maybe, okay, if you're like me, this is probably what's going to happen. I'm going to be using SDR control on my iPad on the home Wi-Fi, doing FT8. And while I'm doing things with the kids with the Eclipse, I'm thinking about taking the day off uh, to hang out with my kids. I'm going to be doing all that stuff, showing them how to safely not boil your eyeballs with the uh, with the Eclipse. And I'm going to be going FT8 at the same time. I think that's what I'm probably going to do. And I'll switch bands, but you know, generally I'm, I'm going to be probably on like 10, 10 meters is probably what I did for the last eclipse. I'll probably do that again. So, yeah, there you go. All right. Let's um, let's go back to Discord. Anybody that has just any questions, open questions for anything, anywhere, go ahead. We're already 8 o'clock. Let's have some fun. Hey, it's Zach again. Yeah, look, real quick. Uh, I'm not a ham, but I have a ham adjacent question, or more like a project I am working on. I think people might be interested. In it. Yeah, man, just just go nuts, go nuts in the chat. If you want me to talk about it, though, hit question or make sure you say at Ham Radio Crash Course. Same with that CB guy. I don't know. Do we see him come back? Did I miss it? Because I don't think he tagged me. But go ahead again for uh, who is on Discord. Go nuts. Uh, it's Zach again, the one that had the oh issue yeah. With my, yeah, it. I I don't know what it is. I give up. Oh, so it's still having the problem? Yeah, I completely factory reset that radio, uh, plugged in the software and reprogrammed it, checked everything, tones, everything. I'm still not hitting it. I don't know what's going on. I give up. And the repeater does have a Roger beep, though. Yes, I, I remember specifically when I was first putting in last week that uh, it, it would come back with a, a tone afterwards. So are there closer... I know you said there was one repeater you tried. Are there closer repeaters than that one that you could possibly try and hit? Yes, but they require a permission, so I'm not going to be that person that what goes on... What if you just uh, perchunked, like, once, just to check it? I mean, I could, How, but... They're not going to know. Randolfo says no one's going to come and, and take your radio away. You're just checking. Right, you're, just, right. you're just checking. You're just checking. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, I could try that. I could be I could be so cavalier because it's GMRS, right? And and Randolfo is the authority, right? Yeah. I, as shot. long as they haven't as long as they haven't blocked it out, I do remember some of them blocked out the so, tones. So you might not know where I'm going with this, but I, I want a um I want a proof of concept that it works, right? That's what I'm looking for. Right. Right. I, I, I want to hear that the that the antenna system, feed line, radio, powers all working together in harmony, and you're able to do radio things with it. Until we have that, we're still going item by item, working through the list until we find where the where the smoking gun is, if you will. Yeah. So on my HT, like I said before, um, I do have the repeater programmed on that, but that doesn't reach it. Yeah. Um, so if I key up with my mobile, uh, the the HT doesn't do anything. Obviously, the repeater's not coming back to it. But if I put in a general GMRS channel, my HT does pick it up and I can hear it. So that's something, but that's very close. Obviously, I'm right next try, to my own antenna. So try a closer repeater and see if you can if you can get it to play with you. I'm I'm still not completely set that the uh, the coax isn't got some water in it that is uh, zapping your power, if you will, because water is is you're probably still going to show a good SWR if you have a waterlogged coax line. Really? Okay. Mm, yeah. See, I, I spoke to my wife earlier, and I was like, did it rain the, uh, the last couple of nights? I really don't think it has rained, but... I, it, but it but you be. hit me, if you hit me with a weird, I put tape on the threads, and I tried to jam the coax onto that, you have a compromised feed line system at that point, right? That worries me. So I, I'm I'm kind of just... I'm I'm dialing in on the things that that bother me about what you told right. me. Right, and yeah. I definitely get that yeah. because I honestly I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute, why am I putting threads on here? This is part of the connection. That's for, that's stupid. But it because it needs to make a I good electrical that. connection. It needs to be solid, right? Right, but it, but it was working like that. Like I say, I've had this all up since last weekend, and it's only right. been the last couple of days. 
and it was the other day when I actually decided to go to HRO to go and get that tape. So it, it was working last weekend with that situation, with that thread tape stuff on. So that, yeah. that's... Can you see where I'm coming from? Like, I, I have... I have changed what I did and put waterproofed it properly now, but it was working when it wasn't waterproofed correctly. So, but yeah, I'll I'll try and find a repeater, a closer one, and see if I can just be a bit naughty and just try up it. On it. Just try it. Yeah, you're you're not gonna you're not carrying on conversation. You're just checking. Nobody's gonna get upset about that. Yeah, I'll do that then. Connect your HT up to the antenna and see if that gets through to the repeater. That's that's another option, Mike. That's a really good one. Is is take that feed oh, yeah. line and connect it I to the HT. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's, I didn't think about that. That would be really good. You might want to try that too. Yeah. All right, we got to move ahead here. We got a lot of questions. Uh oh, question: What is Josh's next major antenna purchase? I don't think I'm gonna make another major antenna purchase until I possibly get a different home where I would put up a tower. Uh, I don't have, like, I, I'm very happy with my antenna setup. It's not high enough. So it would literally be me taking the antenna I have, my Step IR 3 band, or 3 element Step IR, and then just putting it on a much higher tower. It needs to be way higher. It will sing if I can get it higher. It will not only sing in the transmit space, but it will be quieter because I'm getting it away from all the riffraff noise on the ground level. If I could do that, oh, buddy, I would be... I would... I, I'm telling you what, guys. I, I, would be, I would be actively contesting more. I would be doing more live HS stuff if I had a better noise floor. I'm just I'm just not willing to take a bunch of time to s like just blast my signal everywhere and then not be able to hear people back. I'm still waiting to hear back from the power company. They should be coming out to do a a survey here. At least that's my hope. And uh, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of some of my noise. But still, I I, I want to get that antenna as high as possible. It's always my goal. Mitchell Pilot, how's it going, man? Thank you for the super chat. Three ninety nine. Have a cup of coffee. That's for Steve K five eighty eight. We'll stay. We'll save that for him. So th thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, I am going to take this opportunity really fast. I, I, I need to use the, the little boy's room. So I'm going to go do that. And you guys that are in the chat, hang tight. I'll be right back. You guys can chat amongst yourselves. Chat amongst yourselves. Take a moment. Um, but yeah, give me, give me two minutes and I'll be right back. Enjoy the memes while I'm gone. All right. Here we go. Hey, uh, question for you trying to hit your repeater. Um, uh, a little more detail. Uh, what's your distance and uh, power? What, what HT are you using? Uh, what was that? Sorry, I, I was I was messing with it. What was that? You talking to me, right, you guys? Yeah, sorry. The. Uh... PTT always drops below the uh, bar. Um, which HT are you using? Um, how much power? Uh, what's the uh, distance on that uh, repeater? So it's a it's a twenty five watt mobile unit that I was that I that I've been using. Um, the repeater, I am right on the edge of the repeater. I am like thirty miles away from it. But um, like I was saying to Josh before, I I was hitting it. I was hitting it before, and I was having full conversations with people before. And then all of a sudden, I'm just not hitting it. So you have all your settings uh, correct, and your uh, um, decode tone, your um, everything still as it was. You're just not getting the repeater. Yep. Uh, it literally the yesterday morning i was talking to somebody turned it off for a couple of hours came back listened to people talking tried to key up nobody could hear me and then that's when the problem started do you mean they can't hear you or do you have a you're not getting in oh i'm not getting in i'm not getting in do you have a an external uh, power swr meter that you can uh, put in after your uh, mobile yeah, I, I already did that. Um, my SWR isn't the best. It's about 1.6, um, and it says I'm doing about 20, 21 watts out. 
Which is the output of the radio, so that's what you expect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've found with the uh, repeaters that I've uh, gone after, obviously, the taller they are, the uh, the better the range. I mean, I can hit, uh, well, the repeater association I belong to is uh, 32 miles away, and I can hit it with an FT-70 in my living room with a signal stick. But that's because the repeater's 800 feet high. So I give all that to the repeater and... Obviously, having a really clean radio helps. Yeah. So something that I don't, I don't know if anybody's mentioned, but it's entirely possible that the receive sensitivity of the repeater is is not as good as it maybe was last week. Um, He's had two repeaters, though, that he can't hit that he normally could, he said. That's the part that, that, that gets me. If it was Actually, just... let, me, let, me, let me clarify that a little bit. Okay. The the second repeater that I tried, I'd actually never tried to hit before. Oh. But it, it's it's closer on my gmrs.com. It is six miles closer, but I have actually never spoken to somebody on that one before. Uh, Do you have uh, a uh, uh, nano VNA by chance? They're very inexpensive. Sounds to me like you need to uh, connect to your uh, coax from the radio and sweep it. Yeah, Josh, I, um, I haven't bought one. I I haven't gotten to that stage yet. Could propagation be, because you're at the fringe of both of these, it sounds to me like, in the UHF frequency area. It is propagation? Um, not really. Is it pop? I mean, because... Not this time of year, no. No. Nah. I was thinking solar, but... Guys, keep keep in mind, he, he went from the evening leading up to an evening where he was making contacts, and then the next morning he stopped making contacts. And so either something just big changed in his antenna feed line setup or uh, something changed on the repeater, which is possible. But th that's what we're talking about here. So th the, the test, and let's let him go off and do it, is find a much closer repeater, test with that, or multiple close repeaters. See if you can get some kind of pro positive note on that to at least figure out if the antenna, like, so we've tested the radio, right? The radio's putting out the power. The SWR to the radio looks good. So you've got one or two problems. One, the coax is so waterlogged, it's presenting as 1.6 to 1 SWR. And you're just, all your power's getting attenuated into that water. Um, and the antenna is just sitting there going like, I don't see anything, right? Uh, that's a problem. So you could alleviate that. You could test this. Put your HT on the coax, the feed line, and test that. And if your HT, which we know the HT doesn't normally make it to the repeater, it could, though, hypothetically. Five watts is one S unit off of uh, what your other radio is putting out at 20 watts. So it's it's not... It's not uh, out of the possibility that that HT could hit that repeater. That's actually a good test. You should probably try. You should probably try that first. Actually, now that I think about it, one S unit's nothing on a repeater. You should still be able to key it up. Yeah, I have actually just found another repeater that is actually open and it's twenty miles away, so well, it's ten miles closer. So, but, but do the HT first if you could. Do do the HT okay. first and in the feed line because that would that would that should rule that out uh, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to we're literally. So, by the way, guys, if anybody doesn't know the the madness behind all this, it's just like trying to to troubleshoot a car. If you're having a car, like I need I need fuel, spark, air. Right. Th those are the three things you need radio, feed line, antenna. Right. Once we get those three things sorted out, then we, we can start diagnosing what the problem is. Oh, I left the door cracked. That's why you can hear the dog. I'll be right back. You guys keep talking. I'll be back. Yeah, I'm going to go and get my GMRS HT radio that I know right. definitely has that repeated tuned in. So I'll go and get that and then stick it on my uh, antenna. Oh, perfect. Yeah, let's try that. Let's do that. Yeah, it was sudden problems like that, which I had one and um, immediately suspected my uh, transmission line antenna. And I went out there and sure enough, uh, a little solder connection on an LDG uh, 9 to 1 un un uh, had uh, cracked right yep. on the center feet of the coax. And so I just swapped out the un and I was back in business. Yeah, it, 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 by the way, 
a lot of these things are disposable over time, right? You're going to damage things over time. Feed line to our best of abilities is still eventually probably going to get water into it. There's going to be some ingress. Your your little wire, oh, you know, your waterproofing is going to fail if you're using mastic or coaxial. Over time, eventually all things come to an end. And so coax and antenna connectors and balans and ununs, they all potentially have to be replaced over time. We're not surprised when that happens. The, the question is, how successful are we in diagnosing the problem and dealing with it? And so that's, that's why we're here. If, you know, if we can help you out to figure out what's going on there, we'll do our best. Test your SWR with all coax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's done all that he can. Um, I will say, by the way, regardless if you're a GMRS user, a CB user, a ham radio operator, you should get yourself a Nano VNA. They're like 50 bucks. Everybody should put it on your, uh, on your Christmas list. I'll grab a link and I'll drop it to my Amazon store if, if you're so inclined to buy one from me. But uh, if, you're, if you're not so inclined, just send it to your loved ones and get them to buy it for you. That's what I would say. 50 bucks, I was like, I cannot tell you how good it is a time to be an, uh, a radio operator where you can buy this test equipment that is just through the roof good in comparison to what we've had in the past. So, yeah, you, you should definitely grab one of those if you can. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I do have something I got to tell you guys about before I, I drop a video on it, because I'm a, I'm about to do that probably next week maybe. So let me let me find something. Go ahead. Any other questions or anything to talk about? Let's hear it. Comment. Go ahead. Comment. Um, I I don't think you, I think it, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody with a nano DNA that. Uh, would suggest not having one. I think everybody who has <laughs> yeah. one has one right? good thing. Yeah. So I'd say it, it's a great recommendation I have one. Um, I don't know GR, GMRS that well, um, but are there like web SCRs or, you know, that Kiwi site where you can check to see if your signal is getting out? Does that exist for GMRS? And I imagine Echo Link does not exist for GMRS. It, it it does, but you, you have to get really lucky that you have an SDR that's close to you, that can hear you, that's within line of sight. That's that's kind of the problem is that um, it, it's all line of sight. So if your SD, SDR that's web enabled is not physically in your your path, if you will, then you're not you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to pick yourself up. So it's more likely that Zach has repeaters to test his propagation than web SDRs. Yeah, the, the Roger beat becomes really, really important with line of sight stuff. Understood. Thanks. Yeah, vol uh, voltage drop, bad connection can limit transmit power. That's right. So Sean saying, you know, go check your coax connection, particularly at the antenna site is going to probably be worth a check. That's true, too. After you went in and monkeyed with it, too, you know, I don't know what happened, but, you know, you won't want to check that. Let me get a chance, Josh. I do need your help with something. Uh, Yeah, let, let's take it. There's a couple of questions in the uh, text chat on YouTube, so hang tight. We'll come back to you. But, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead with the question. Um, I have to... Uh... Send a radio to Cupertino, uh, Yesu Command, and uh, obviously I'd really like for them to fix it under warranty, and I understand there's a good delay, but I could uh, use some insider recommendations. Besides my friendship with a certain somebody here in Chicago to be successful in sending it in and anything uh, that you've heard or know to do to improve my chances of getting a successful warranty would sure be helpful. I'm so confused. So isn't Yesu in Cypress, California? Not Cupertino? That's Apple. I'm sure I'm confusing the cities because I haven't even called them yet. Oh, I'll okay. probably call r &L on Monday to... Uh, um, they've always been really helpful, especially with all the dead-on delivery and nano b and they've sent me. Yeah, but they're not going to do a DOA return on a 991A, and um, yeah. obviously, when you're disabled like me, the radio is my life. Yeah, so uh, I don't know what does Chicago have to do with this. 
I'm sorry. We have a um, a certain Yesu rep who lives out here, uh, who I know through emergency services, and I don't talk uh, Yesu with him or radio. I, he's a friend. I'm not going to ask him for help with that. Are, are we talking about John Crook, who's in Wisconsin or Minnesota? Yeah, by run oh. to him out here at HR. Oh, Milwaukee gotcha. Okay. Places like that. He's not in. He's and, not in Chicago. He's all around here. I don't okay. know how he splits his atoms. Sorry, but he sorry. Is everywhere around here. There, you <laughs> just you just dropped all these pseudo hints that I I wasn't picking up the line on. So okay, I got it. Um, so if you bought this through R and L, and it showed up dead, you should talk to R and L straight up. Like you should you should reach out to them and be like, hey, um, this arrived dead. Is that what happened? Nope, I uh, switched over to uh, UHF last night and was full power, and it uh, sent out the most outrageous cloud of smoke after the uh, transmit relay went crazy, and um, the the smell is awful. And oh, okay. Everything about it is awful. I've never blown a radio up that bad. Okay, I, I I'm uh, I, I'm losing the plot here. So I I thought you said that it was it arrived dead. So that's. Not the case. Okay. Um, so RNL is probably not going to be able to help you because you've been using the radio for how long? Uh, every day for nine months. <laughs> nine months. Okay. You probably should call Yesu, and they're going to have you ship it back to them. That's just, that's just what's going to happen. As far as, like, is there a special tactic to get a warranty coverage? I don't know of one. Uh, what will likely happen is, uh, unless it's unless it's a, you know, a defect, which I've not heard of a defect related to the, to the UHF side of the house, what will happen is they'll probably hit you up with a, some kind of an invoice to fix it and then get it on the way back to you. Yep, that's uh, what I was afraid of. But being that uh, it's never done anything like that before, if uh, I was uh, pushing the threshold, it always went to an auto shut off, and that was just mm -hmm. two meters. Yeah, so if it's under warranty, there's a couple of people that are talking in chat that if it's under warranty, you know, then you know, push them to take care of it because you gave it a good antenna and you gave it, you know, should be fine. No, there's no expect that you should have a problem. Uh, Ethan's in the chat. He says, I have shipped three radios to Yesu. All three were my fault-ish. Two of the three were sent in within one year of ownership and were fixed under warranty. So if there's anything I would take from that is get it in a box and ship it to them immediately so that they can hopefully fix it for you under warranty. God bless you, Ethan. Um, you just reduced my acid content by a half. There you go. Get it in a box, man. Ship it. Because, I mean, regardless, if you're not going to fix it yourself, then then get it out to them as fast as possible so you can get back on the air. Yeah, I wouldn't mind digging into my Kenwood 590, uh, but that Yesu, not a chance. That's the tiniest little box of parts yeah. and doohickeys. I wouldn't even open it to look at this point. With an, with an all-band uh, type of radio like that, you're better off just send it back and let them take a look at it so you can make sure you get it done right. Well, uh, good. Thank you so much. I was losing sleep over this. Good luck. And actually, uh, we're gonna we're gonna let you be our our field correspondent on uh, Yesu warranty. So. Keep us updated. Come back every week and tell us how it's going. We'd like to hear the uh, the progress. I got a comment. Go ahead, Mike. Um, we Rob recently uh, M zero J E O uh, recently had his Yesu return um, return with no uh, no charge. Although he did return it to the dealer, and the dealer returned it to uh, to um, Yesu. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it turned out the 710 had had an, a faulty batch of CPUs, and they were fixing them as they come across them. It did take them for at least a couple of months to sort it, but, mm -hmm. well, yes, who? But they didn't charge anything, and all was good. And, you know, they said, sorry, ap apologies for their, uh, uh, you know, the poor experience. But um, 
they were I, uh, just fairly genuine about it, they, you know. I, I'm inclined to go with Mike in the sense of at least giving RNL a call so that, you know, see what you can do via them. It's possible that they may have some kind of policy where you ship it back to them and then they ship you the replacement and then they take the one under warranty and ship it. That's not unheard of. I'm not saying that that's the way they do it in ham radio or or I'm not saying that's how RNL does it. Nobody have RNL call me that I'm writing checks that they're not going to cash. Uh, but you know you, you might well, you give them a call and see what you know what options are available there as well. Yeah, they've always uh, been a mom and pop type store. They've uh, right. been super helpful over the years. And just for that reason, I call them when I'm not fully aware of what I need to get. And they help me figure it out. Oh, that's a ham until it hurts. Good comment. Yesus have a three year warranty if bought from an approved dealer, which I would be shocked if RNL isn't. And if it's not, somebody tell me because we're going to stop yeah. pointing people over there. But I would be shocked if they weren't an approved <laughs> dealer. So, yeah, avail yourself of that. All right. Okay, let me let me go up the chat a little bit. Unless there's somebody on the Discord. Is there anybody on the Discord that has a question or comment? Go ahead. I'm back from messing around my radios. But if you're wanting to do YouTube questions and stuff. I'll... Do, you, do you got any big findings for us? Absolutely nothing. I connected. Oh. I connected my HT, which I know for certain works because I use it to talk to the repeater on the way home from work sometimes. Yeah, with mag mount, um, that wasn't getting through. And then oh. the closer repeater that's twenty miles away instead of thirty, um, I wasn't getting any tone back from that or anything if it has one like i okay. said i've never keyed up on that one before you're gonna you're gonna hate me asking this but have you ever used the mag the the mag mount in your car when you're at home to key up the radio has that worked yes i did that earlier on today when i thought about it and i took my radio outside with a little portable power thing plugged it into my car and i couldn't i couldn't get it to hit the, but the, i have never the tried mobile to hit. or the handheld the mobile the mobile have you tried the handheld Yes, but I can't hit from home with the uh, with even with the mag mount uh, yeah. with the HT. So oh, at this buddy. at this point, yeah, at this point, I think there's probably something going on with uh, with the antenna because I don't know if you took um, a good look at the antenna when I told you which one it was, but one of the things, um, yeah, it has oh. like an open back. The back of mm -hmm. the connector is all exposed. Um, and I put a bunch of hot glue all around it to... Oh, no! That's not the way! <laughs> Is it not? I don't know! <laughs> so, yeah, I, I did I did pull up the antenna. So, yes, I, I see what you're talking about. You just have an open backplane UHF connector. Yeah. No, normally but, we but... use self-amalgamating tape or something called mastic to create a waterproof covering if you will on that connector. Right. We, we don't gob but, it up with hot glue <laughs> but I, again i would like to say that i did that when i first put the antenna up and i was getting signals until a couple of days ago so i'm not saying that that might be an issue now but it was working with that on but but then so. you also had this coax thing on the threads too or something the the tape on the thread yes yes but it so, was working <laughs> so i guess put the tape back on it should work again right <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah but all right so um I, I guess i need to get one of these um okay these wait, wait 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 a very important question the what? hot glue did you put it on the threads no i put it okay. on the back of the connector it's exposed uh, there's a little solder joint that goes to the vertical from that the back yeah. of the uh what is it what is it pl 30 five six or something like that whatever it is um i just put it around that and just... uh you didn't use like loctite on the connector or anything right no no okay um how long ago did you do this hot glue waterproofing job a week ago when i first put it up and i've had contacts that's yeah. all week until now so but I, I can take that off obviously I'm do something different i guess i'll look it up and see i mean exactly if, you, if you have an hro by you they would have said like no you, you know you should use coax wrap or coax seal or something like that well that's what they gave me to put around the coax but, but okay again, wait, I, wait wait, wait. But... so hold on the the coax wrap is 
So if this is the threaded connector, right, and the and the and the coax goes over the threaded connector, the coax wrap is supposed to cover the antenna side of the connection and the connector. It's supposed to bond them together. That's what it's doing. Yeah. So where, when when you screw it into the connector, I wrapped it all around there and over the connector itself, and a little bit over the cable coming down my roof, okay. just a little bit. Yeah. But I didn't put anything on the back that is exposed. Uh, the back that is exposed shouldn't be that big of a deal because that's all electrical connection with like set screws and stuff like that. That should be fine. The, the okay. problem. The, the problem you're trying to avoid is having water get in between the center pin and the shield. There is a insulator that that lives between the shield and the center pin, and it is accepting it, it accepts moisture. And if you start getting water into that, it will kill your power. It'll it'll attenuate your signal, your transmit signal, to the point okay. that it will not transmit. Lord Callum. You will get condensation when you seal stuff up like that tight. Lord, Lord Callum uses uh, Vaseline on the threads in, instead of like a, a permanent, and it seems to work pretty good for me too. Uh, it gets the threads on e easier too. You don't you don't do a coax wrap on the outside. Me? No, he does not. And but the thing is, he will tell you that he's only doing that for temporary. Okay, like, I would not Jeez. put that on my don't, system that had been out there for five years. Don't don't, don't be telling people yeah. that. <laughs> well, well, Callum does, but yeah. But temporary, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's mentioned that it's it's only for temporary. Now, how long is temporary? I don't know, but I know in the Texas heat, it will dry up. So I use dielectric grease on connectors, like on the on the, the socket side and the pin side. I absolutely use dielectric grease. Like that is paramount, particularly on a mobile setup. Oh my God, dielectric grease is amazing. Uh, gob that whole thing up. Totally fine. But on the feed line side, I absolutely waterproof that. You gotta. Gotta. So are you saying that the middle part between the center and the out part will gather moisture on that? It's like a reddish color, I think. Over time. It, on the, a PL259, the, yes, it'll take on. The co yeah. uh, hold on, let me, let me, yeah, hold on. Okay. Well, yeah, so the, yeah, look, so the whole back of that you, is exposed on that antenna. No, 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 the, the backside's not it. So let, let, this is what I'm talking about. So here is here's a piece of coax, right? See that white part? That white, and it'll catch up for you on the video feed. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to catch up. That white part separates the shield of the coax from the center pin. That is insulation material. It's an insulator. So if you get water in there, it will accept moisture. All of them will. And once it gets loaded with moisture, the water will attenuate your signal. It'll zap the power output. It's like the power gets absorbed by the water, right? And then once that happens, there's very little you can do to get it out of there other than just leave the coax open-ended and let it dry out over time. But even then, it's never really going to go back to good. Gordo would almost tell you that that's done. Say your, say your piece and say la vie. Right. So the, the connector that that goes into, that has that on the back of there as well, right? Well, yeah, but those connectors... Um, oftentimes are like a, a bulkhead connector. So it's like a square plate with four holes and there's a center pin sticking out of it. Those are much more weather resistant. And if you threw hot okay. glue on the top of that, that's fine. I'm talking about the part where the where the screwy bit goes into the, the threaded bit. Oh yeah, no, I'm talking about the back of the connector now, that you screw onto. That is exposed and now, I put hot glue around that. I'm talking about the did you oh, did you okay. put something on the, the threaded bit and the and the, the screwy bit? The first time I put a little bit on the very end. No, back I'm talking. I'm talking about that coax wrap. You put that on there, right? Yes, but not on the threads. I put it all around the connector. No, so you you connect it. You 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 make a solid connection, and then you wrap all of it: the threaded yeah, side, yeah. the the collar side, the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've done now. Yeah. Okay, but but you're saying you did it now. But how long has it been up? in rain or whatever, even in Florida, humidity and not been done. Uh, so I only did it a couple of days and I put it up last weekend. So I only put the wrap on a couple of days ago. 
gosh, it's, it's been it's up a week. So, oh boy, this is this is kind of a tough one. This is almost like a, I almost need to be there to. You, you'd almost have to disconnect the coax, do the do the eight, you know, the the multimeter check to make sure you have continuity between both sides, all sides, and then you don't have pin well, to well, pin. Question. Go ahead, Mike. What radio is it? It's a GMRS radio, twenty watt yeah, GMRS. Yeah, was it one of these? Chinesium ones. Uh, yeah, it's yes. <laughs> yes, it's, the it's, answer is it, yes. It's it's not actually a GMRS radio. It's just unlocked. <laughs> oh right, okay. I didn't hear that. La 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 la. I have had some experience with the Chinesium cheap UHF VHF dual band twenty odd watt radios suddenly not working for no apparent reason. With that, with absolutely no signs of smoke or anything, they just go not mm -hmm. doing it anymore. Sod off. I mean, it's, excuse it's, the expression. It's Chineseism, but it's it's a red of us, so it's the red of us. Yeah, yeah, even one of those. Yeah, yeah. even one of those. They can uh -huh. just go. I'm not doing this anymore. Go away. I so, too. I've had, yeah. I've I had too have had experience them, with so, the Chinese. Actually, we've had three of them do it. So. But I'm not saying this is the case. In case you're ready to go on a road trip tomorrow, go park under that repeater and irritate some people. Well, also, get get your ham mm -hmm. test finished uh, in the next couple of weeks, and then you can actually use the radio properly. And there may be a repeater closer that you can work. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Jody has a, an important question in the text chat. If you go to uh, hashtag live dash stream, Jody posted a picture. This is a bulkhead connector. And he's saying, so this is the part you filled up with hot glue. I'm assuming is yes. And live stream. So if you if yes, you, yes, you, that's what I covered in hot glue because it was exposed. Yeah, that's the back plane. Okay, the back plane of the bulkhead connector. Yeah. Uh. So link, link me that link me that analyzer that you're talking about. I'll just go buy one. I, I'll I get that I as well. It. Did I already do it? Yeah, that's that's it, it. It's yeah, in the chat. Actually, if you go look on RNL's site, uh, the very first picture they're special today it happens to be an No Nano way. BMW. Is it really? It's it's almost yeah, look, like they knew. It, Josh. It's almost like they knew. Let's see. RNL Electronics. No way. And they are so good about uh, honoring their warranty. No questions yeah. asked. Just send it. They'll give you another one. Yeah way. You looking at it, Josh? That's a v That's the five hundred sixty nine dollar one. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, it is. That takes you up to six gigahertz, man. That's what like the hell, dude. You don't want that. That's not what you need. You don't need that, man. No. Ape has one of those. I don't know why. Does he but... really? That's yeah, he does. You know. Me and Jim both bought him. Oh my god! You know why you well, get the Jim's... one to six gigahertz? I noticed Jim's a ha he's a high roller with some of this stuff. I've seen what he's dropped down oh, cash yeah. on. You're like, whoa, Jim, calm down, man. Well, he bought that whole seven thousand dollars setup with the uh, PGXL and the uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, hey, Josh, you better drop a few video links for him on uh, sweeping with a, a brand new uh, $50 VNA. Yeah, uh, I have a video out on how to set up the VNA, including. So you do have to you, you do have to calibrate it, as it's called. But all the calibration tools are in the box. Uh, by the way, this is this is a project. This is a thing you're going to learn. I, I guarantee, though, you're going to come out the back end with a, a lot of usable knowledge. So take your time with it. Uh Gosh, I normally we have a really good track record for answering all problems, but this one is unless someone's there that can do some uh, testing with some some uh, some equipment, it, it's going to be hard for us to be able to like solve this one. I think. Unfortunately. Yeah, and I get that. I really he, do appreciate he did help. say Florida, Josh. It could very well be the repeater site. I mean, all bets are off in that weather there. No, but he's got other repeaters programmed. Yeah, not only that, he's hearing people talking on that repeat. Yeah, he's he, it's it's good. Not for a couple of hours, I'll admit that, but that just well could be, this yeah. time of night, yeah. But here, here's the thing: if you've heard one person on the repeater, you've heard all people because the repeater is only as strong as the repeater output. You're not hearing the originating signal. The originating signal is getting retransmitted from the repeater site. So, if you heard one station on the repeater, that means the repeater is making it. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you if you heard the repeater after all of this happened, then the receive side of this is not a problem. Which honestly, you you still will receive signals if you have waterlogged coax. That's still totally plausible. So something uh, that okay. something that just a crazy question. Has your coax been compromised in some way, nicked or cut or something like that? Uh Somebody didn't randomly some, shove a pin through your coax or anything like that because that would that would prevent. In the window. No, I don't think I slammed it in the window. I 3D printed. I've got sliding windows, so I 3D printed uh, a big long piece with two separating half holes so that I could have it come through the window. But I don't think that would have pinched it. See, see, you are, you, you've said too much already. You should be a ham radio <laughs> operator already. You said 3D printing. <laughs> You've said all these t things that you've been doing. You you should be a, a ham at this point. So go get. Your... I I've got like six HTs for some reason, and I've got a G ninety sitting on the bench that I bought yesterday, and I don't Come know on. why. Come on, what? And you're not? Are you, are you getting licensed? What are you doing? Yeah, well, so I, I was gonna do my technician last week, and then I wanted to think. I was like, oh, I want to do the HF stuff. So then I'm trying to knock out my technician and my general at the same time. So I only pay once. Good for but... you. I, I maybe at this point I should just do the first one and then I can at least start having some real fun and then do my general eventually. But I've already got the equipment, so once you have a nano VNA, you'll stop buying antennas too. And you're in, buddy. You're just you're hooked. yeah, man. You're you you're a ham radio operator. You just didn't know it yet. That's it. You're already there. I'm telling you. You're you're you're, yeah. you're, you're all the things you're saying. It's like oh, this this guy's a ham. Get him in here. Uh, don't oh, forget that really Josh is. <laughs> Josh's Discord runs tests, so it's not difficult yeah. to get a test. Yeah, we'll, we'll test you online. Yeah. I, I was, I was going to actually do that. I was going to go to the local club, but they only do it once a month. And then I, th I think it was your last stream you mentioned that people can do it on this. Uh, so I was yeah. like, oh, I'd probably end up doing it on here then. Yeah. Um, but that analyzer linked on your thing. I can get it tomorrow. Called, oh, I've got one minute to order it. <laughs> there you go. How many times? How many times has Amazon pressured me to buy something for the? Uh, I wake up in the morning and it's sitting in the front yard, and I'm like, okay, sure, let's do that. <laughs> I did that last week for a toothbrush. I did it. I think. I think it's gonna come tomorrow. <laughs> I never would take away a, affiliate links, but with those things, uh, I've had a few that didn't work so good, and I just started using RNL because they. They know how they can be, and I send them. And they give me a new one, no questions asked. Yeah, and RNL is typically has has been cheaper than anything we could get on Amazon. Uh, for the for the nan uh, the sort yes. of the tiny yeah. SA Ultra that was well, a no Nanos question well, buy. That RNL was stupid cheap in comparison to what you could get it elsewhere. That was a mm -hmm. good deal. Continues to be a good deal. Mm hmm. I love well, you know that thing. I use it for everything now. You know, it's amazing, now Josh. Just... You Sorry, haven't so... told him to throw money at it yet. The only thing you've told him I to did. do is get a little, bit of test, a little bit of test equipment. That's not throwing money. That's 50 bucks. I, I, I'm... I'm sorry. I, I've always been. Let's let's work with what you got. I, I'm a I'm a big enthusiast of. If you already paid some money, let's make the thing you got work. It's when people come in blind and they're like, "I got X dollars. Spend this money." Then okay, yeah, then we'll we'll spend the money. But if you got stuff, let's make the stuff you got work. I'm I'm a big no, advocate of that. But it's fun. Oh, I'll I'll stand stand for your honor on that, Josh. Thank you, three. What's that? Oh, there's so many people talking. Say that again. Uh, who was it? The, the funniest part James, was yeah. is he came back and he'd already he'd already spent it. It was like, oh my gosh, yeah, you're already a hand, so just go take yeah. the test. So somebody said on your honor, and I heard that. Who well, say that comment? Again. I said I'll I'll stand for your honor. You have a day job, and you're one of the few uh, proficient instructors in ham radio who oh, isn't nice. pushing gear on us all the time and. If you tell us something that's good, most of us will buy it because we trust you. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I I talk about stuff, and yeah, I I've I've guiltily made people spend their money, no question. But um, I, I'm now the the video I dropped this week with the with that with the Chinese man pack thing. 
I'm always really concerned when I drop videos like that because I, I think there's a certain contingent where they'll just go out and like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go buy this. I'm like, well, it's $1,800. So, you know, maybe you'll dial back that a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it because it was, it was cool in a weird way. So yes, in Interstellar Starman, Josh has his opinions. Everybody has their opinions. It's, it's the same way, what was it? Uh, Once Upon a Time, I think it still exists, but it doesn't have the same people I love. Giantbomb.com was a video game review site. And I could confidently say if they said that video was good, I knew those reviewers and I was pretty happy with anything that I bought that they reviewed because I, I knew them, I liked the way they did things, and I was happy with that. The same thing's true with, with amateur radio or any hobby. If you like what I do, or if you watch my video and you get the context that I'm throwing out, then, you know, yeah, like, okay, we're, we're aligned to a degree. I, I'm not going to be your guy for DMR, right? I, I don't think, I, I make no apologies for that. Um, but if I'm somewhere in the space and, and, I, and if I give the appropriate context, I, I, the hope is that, like, you'd be better off to decide if this is the thing for you or not you know that that's kind of what i always aim for it's tough though because we all bring our own biases when we make videos and stuff like that so. josh is your guy for step ir oh yeah i i do like step ir I, I i'm very happy with my step ir have you seen that dipole they have uh the urban beam no it's a dipole um Whiskey 7 Hotel Uniform, you know, Alex? Yeah, that's the new one yeah. that they have. Yeah, right? he switched over to that. $1,500 for a dipole. Rotatable dipole. I Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a bit. That's a bit on the I, That's side. a salesman there. He he was, uh, well, he was all over me about getting a step IR out down in uh, Orlando. Oh, yeah, it's literally just a single element. Yeah, I like Alex. Um, Which means it's bidirectional, basically. I'll, I'll tell you what the the guy that uh, when I when I was parting out my step IR, which is no joke, like they're, they're very expensive. I uh, <laughs> I was talking to the guy, and I was I was kind of sold on the Urban Beam, and he was like, "Okay, what do you got right now?" And I was like, "I got a hex beam." He's like, "Urban Beam is just a hex beam. It's the same thing. It's the same amount of gain." Are you trying to get better? Or are you trying to be the same? Or you know what? What are you trying to do? Because the urban beam isn't necessarily any less wide. If anything, they would argue hex beams are better in wind load than the urban beam is because it's a it's like a horizontal bow tie in the air versus this round inverted umbrella type of thing. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And he's like, well, you know, we got this three element Yagi. We'll get you twelve dB on that bad boy. And I was like. Say no more, friend. Say no more. <laughs> so that's why I have a three element step IR now because it was like, yeah, no, you're right. Everything you're saying is is totally accurate. Oh my god, it goes all the way up to twenty three hundred dollars. You're, uh, so if you go uh, optim. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're doing step IR, you should probably get the the optimizer two point control box. What is that? I don't know. What I get my radio for that interface cable is. Uh, we'll leave that on the side for right now. Uh, okay, we'll leave that on the side. Choke, yeah, go with the choke. Oh, the choke is one hundred nineteen dollars. Holy smokes! Okay. Oh, no, it's too bad. And add a eight. Yeah, we can avoid that. Yeah, so I already cranked that up. I already uh, cranked that whip to twenty four hundred dollars. <laughs> what bands does it cover? For a dipole. It, for a dipole. It's adjustable. Well, sure. It yeah, you get you itself. get th six through twenty, which is nice, but. Right. Uh, oh, a hex beam. Yeah, a hex beam is less expensive than that. I would, I would probably. Well, point no, you to a hex I just beam. mean it's the same bands, but it actually though it probably doesn't have the gain. Well, the VHQ guy, the guy that makes the the most robust uh, mm -hmm. nuclear <laughs> nuclear bomb proof uh, nuclear. Sorry, somebody's gonna yeah. give me fits if I don't say that correctly. Nuclear. Uh, nuclear bomb proof uh, uh, hex beam that's 1600 bucks for the antenna that's a good antenna yeah. too. that's a good option and then he he has a dipole too but it's a 40 meter dipole that right yeah yeah this doesn't go up to 40 it, but... oh you can do that too that's fun you can do that whole thing. I, I saw somebody asking 550 for a used titan dx 
gap antenna. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, man, I'm so glad I went back to Florida and saved that puppy. Uh, well, the gap ham radio. Though. Ham radio is a rich man's hobby. It can be. Mm-hmm. Going back to, yeah. oh boy, 20's open, guys. <laughs> 20, oh, we 17, gotta... 17 is great right now. Oh, you're now. on 17 right now? Oh, yeah, I got, I got uh, Alaska Poda. I got the Alaska guy, too. Yeah, earlier. Uh, on 17. Oh, on 17. Okay. Different guy. But there. anyway, I mean, uh, Fiji's on there. Um, what, uh, Suriname's on there on 17? All right. Um, I, I do want to get to my little project, but. We have so many good questions coming did you, in. Did you see my picture, yeah. Josh? Did I did not. You have a, I added you in it. <laughs> did we ever Thank answer? Thank you, Mike. Uh, you son of a... Did uh, we ever answer Ed's question? I don't know. Where's Ed's question? What is it? Oh, it's long gone. Uh, uh, a long past, but it was basically... I mean, somebody, is, somebody asked like 15 times in the car... Uh, the car... Uh, chat and then several yes, times in your is. chat and then the uh ed ask it again they're basically saying is how do you control alc and fl bit oh it's the same guy yeah um oh, okay I, yeah so that's just the plumbing fl digi's the plumbing you still you're still going to have to like control the drive via the application you're running like wsjtx you're going you're going to have to tune the volume with that or yeah. go on the radio and adjust down the receive side yeah, I Lower just was wanted to, yeah. I just wanted to see if you covered the thing because I, I had to step away for a family emergency. But yeah, he did really well, and and I always have to play with my DT on the Yaesu to literally every band change just to keep that ALC right where I need it. And that's the thing on the Flex, the Ana, and the Hermes. I never touch the ALC. Don't have to. And, and that's why ham radio is a rich man's hobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, well, to me, contesting, I don't care what you say about it. Ham radio contesting is pay to win. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, it is. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, eh, to, a, to a degree, because so, okay, so hear me out. I think that if a contest is offering a QRP power output and you have some good home-built wire antennas that you're going to run QRP with, you do pretty well, actually. Particularly well, not... if, if you can go to a site where you can do multi-op, like they do in Winter Field Day. The local club does Winter Field Day multi-op. They they kill it mm-hmm. on that. And they well, do... yeah. And then yeah. I know guys that are running QRP with a step IR at 150 feet. That's not that's not the same thing. But yeah. that's not what the rules say. You can still put a Yagi up there at 150 feet. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, okay. I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, does that mean that they're doing it? I, you know, I do know a couple of guys that do it, but uh, do they contest that much? I don't know. But, you know, well, you'll hear them on POTA going, yeah, I'm QRP. Man, how are you 5'9"? Oh, well, I've got a, a three-element Mosley at, you know, 60 feet. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're putting out five watts for sure, but... Somebody is directly on my frequency. Uh, so, I love this. Guys, if, if you can see... Hold on. So, let, let me do the... Uh, let me do my, my finger point. There it is. I will I will bring right here. This is where I'm transmitting. So, yep. this, little, this little check uh, is... I'm lined up in the parking lot space. I'm at 1900 mm-hmm. uh, kilohertz, or 1900 hertz. And you see you've got two people that are splitting my parking lot space not to jack, not good jack your frequency they probably yep, can't they hear are. me but they they're they're not they don't understand how ft8 works ft8 is you, you need to be lined up on the the hundreds or the 50s that's the way to do it so mm-hmm. i've stopped transmitting i'm going you to know what people do to politely get you out of their spot they just keep answering your cq every time and they do it and they do it and they do it oh i'm in their spot <laughs> No, I, I just move. It, it's not worth the time. Yeah. Just well, I, I, a lot of people don't even bother. You know, they they don't even bother checking it. Yeah, you know? Most people are brainless. Yeah, they, yeah. they just they just hijack your frequency, and next thing you know, they're calling CQ, and you're like, wait a second, I've been here for like you know. Well, there there are guys though that will come in and they will 
they expect they think you're not on fixed frequency and they'll come in and answer your CQ hoping that your transmit will move over to some other window and then they're going to take that spot cuz I've had them do that before and but when I used to be on fixed frequency and then it's like you know why did you answer my CQ and then you just disappeared and I don't mean they disappeared. They just went calling to somebody else. I, I'm dying oh. at this comment from Starman. Air hogs. Anybody remember air hogs, the RC planes that you could buy? They were oh, the yeah. best. I loved air yeah. hogs. They were so good. Yeah, all the, the kids uh, had them. I think, my, I think they came out when my stepson was. The, yeah. the bi-wing. The gauge. The bi-wing air hogs where you could mod it and do all kinds of stuff. And, and, and the, 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 the wings only gave you lift. And then you controlled the left right with the, the with the two rotors. It had two engines or two motors, and you you would control it left right with that. It was oh it was so much fun. I used to take that in the office and piss people off. I'd fly it over the cubicles. They were getting so bad. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. What? No Nerf guns? Somebody didn't shoot it down with a Nerf gun? No, well, no. This was this was Boeing. Oh, that's where fun we... goes to die. Did, did you uh, ever see those USB Nerf launchers that... Uh, oh, yeah, the, could, the, the, the know, desktop trackers the, that would have yeah. motion sensors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. I've worked yep. a lot of places that have had that had Nerf guns, usually. On so, the, yeah. Call, call I, centers and whatnot. I still want... Oh, yeah, no, I mean, like, we had them, but, you know, it was almost like a, a prop piece. It was like a, a rifle on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, people didn't really break them out that much. So uh, the, the, the point of the video, well, one of the points of the video, the live stream here, was so we got this True SDX, and one of the interesting things about the True SDX is it, it has a USB port on the side. And hypothetically, with the, with the firmware I have on here, you should be able to plug into this and be able to do digital modes. So that's what we're going to attempt to do with, uh, with my Android tablet. So I'm going to grab a couple of things we need here. So in my... In my tactical boxes so here. You do have the good one there. I've seen a lot of bootlegs, I think. I don't know. I've wanted to get one, but I'm nervous. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad you asked that question. It's like I, I prompted you to ask that question. So I think I need that. And that is, uh, this is an on-the-go USB plug. So let me, let me take one of these out. On-the-go is important. We need on-the-go. So we're going to grab that real fast. And then I will answer your question. Because, uh, <laughs> hey, it's almost like I, it's almost like I paid you to say that exact question. So let let let's go back here for a second. So DL two M A N, and uh, what is it? I always script it P E one N N Z P E one N N Z. So if uh, if I bring up the websites here, so hold on one second. And I know Adam's got comments too because he's he's been a long time user of the True SDX. Uh, let's let's pull this up. Where is it? I lost it. I run FDA. Oh, it. here we go. So here here's the True SDX. It, again, it's like the Baofeng of HF, just straight up. And, and I don't I don't even think that they're offended when I say that because it's it's a very inexpensive radio. Um, I did I did a video though. Hopefully you saw this, where I I did a comparison against uh, many of my little QRP radios, and I'll be honest. The Trusty X audio quality, particularly on single sideband, is very good, like surprisingly good. If you do audio in, like through uh, earbuds, and you use an external microphone, it is actually very usable. It's very good, assuming you don't overdrive the overdrive the the volume, which you can do. But but here's the thing: I, I want to make sure everybody understands. So if you go to the uh, the Trusty X website, actually, let me let me drop this in the in the chat. I have no affiliation with uh, with True STX. Just a, a fan. So if you if you go to uh, where to buy and you and you click on where to buy, very important. Click on where to buy. So th <laughs> they make a lot of comments on where not to buy. Don't buy the black nano rig True STX. Not a verified product. Blah 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 blah. You go down the list here. You got AliExpress, eBay, online shop, Amazon, and so let let's take a second here. I bought them through the eBay store, and so here you go. This is the eBay. They're ninety three dollars each, but so you you have a couple of options. 
kit with no case or fully assembled. So if I click orange fully assembled, which is the way to go, orange is the best uh, color radio. It's $140 yes. pre-assembled, $140. It's done now. Okay. Now I, I have a, a huge, huge point to make here. I cannot state this enough. Let, let's dive in real deep on this. Okay. Look at that screen, everybody. Look at it. Now I'm going to show you the one they sent me. This is from them. I didn't do. I didn't do anything here. I didn't do anything. Okay, let me let me go back. That that blue screen, which is fine, which is fine, but it could be better. So let me let me get this thing connected. Let me get my power supply back going. And I need a power lead. So I guess I wasn't ready. I thought I had a power lead already out here, but I don't. So another box. This is the power cables box. I've boxed up all my stuff. So this, there, there it is. That's the power lead. All right. So power lead. It's the same. By the way, it's the same connector as the Jankopotamus, which is nice. Uh, let's get our power run to source. So we're running 13.4. That's fine. And we'll go into this bad boy. Look at the color. Can you see it? Uh-oh. There it is. Still behind, so no. Multicolor display. <laughs> Nice. So that's pretty slick. Uh, that was the screen that I bought on Amazon when I was having all the trouble with my original kit, True SDX, mm -hmm. and I, I put that in there, and everybody asked me, like, how'd you get that screen? Where'd that come from? Well, that's what they sent me on the eBay, apparently, because that's or what what I th that's what I ended up with. Pretty nice uh, screen, all things considered. That was the one I would recommend people get if they were going to build it themselves. <laughs> Comment. Go ahead, comment. Go ahead, comment. I was just going to say, when you purchase it, make sure you specify your call sign. Um, yeah. There's ways to put it on after the fact. Yeah, so the, the three I bought that I'm going to do mm -hmm. a giveaway for, uh, they do not have a call sign associated with them, so we'll, we'll make sure that we get those people sorted out on the... Uh, on the camp out when they come out, we'll try and get that all taken care of. Um, okay, so uh, now I have a, a true SDX with, with a very upsetty power lead. I don't know what's going on there, so we'll, we'll leave you there right now, bud. So I've got a USB A to USB micro, and we're gonna go into my tablet. I'm going to stop making contacts on. Uh, FT8 for a second here. I'm going to want to blow this thing up. Grab my beer, which is very important. And let me guess you're going to connect that to your uh, step IR. Oh, heck yeah, buddy. <laughs> Come on. See what I mean about pay to win? I don't, I don't have this. Come on now. Come on. All right. So we're going to grab the right connector. Maybe. Do I have the right connector? Oh, where'd that connect? I hate to say it, you know, I, I believe me, if I could shell out, I'd get a step IR. They really are that good, but my world is uh, very well constructed, tuned, inverted L, and I broke my 24 hour record and nailed 100 countries. So, oh, that's amazing. Well, yeah, so, okay. So that's worth a point, too, is that you're, by the way, guys. You don't you don't have to spend like a ridiculous amount of money to still tune your antenna to a fine point where it's very effective, right? I think that's that's what we should be mm -hmm. focusing on a lot here is that sometimes we we do go nuts gaga for like the cutting edge equipment, but a lot of times you can you can do a lot of this on your own and mm -hmm. you can still have a great antenna, right? So, you know, well, the, that the United States contingent to, went to the world radio 
uh, last year, they used seventy three hundreds. Oh, did they really? I didn't know that. That's what the guy said. I listened to an interview for from one of the podcasts. Um, what antenna did they use? Whatever they provided them. No, it's whatever the the world they, they you bring your radios to their antennas at the world competition. Right. So oh, they they just brought seventy three hundreds. Yeah, they got probably got huge antennas. Okay. I figured they'd have seventy six tens, but no, they they went you know small and and it worked. Mm. I would figure they'd do FTDX ten, but that, that's yeah, because that's, that's me. better. But me, yeah. I like what we do in England. All right, so what's I'm, that, Mike? I've got chaos the, here, but let's see. they're on the ICOM payroll. We know that. <laughs> One of the in guys of don't the... don't hate me, but that little radio he has there is sexy. Ham sexy. We can call it ham sexy. All right, You're trying so... to get one for six months. You can't get them in the UK. Why does it just lock itself? Stop. They won't let made you... in Europe. They won't let you buy them off of Amazon. They keep saying they're not available. Sounds like we need to bootleg you in a truckload. A robot's one. Ah, oh, okay, good. It did it. It did the thing. All right. Oh, that was what I was worried about. So, okay. Um, I plugged in the radio using an over-the-air or OTG cable, on-the-go cable. So I'm going to click FT8CN, which is the FT8 application. And it locked again. Why does it keep locking? Okay. So I'm going to click yes. Too much radio near your radio. I know. Too much radio near my radio. Let's get my hat in here as emotional support hat. Okay. So Can they here. sell those in Europe without a USB-C cable? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Sony Apple's. Yeah, it's only Apple. So I don't know if this and, is going to work. And good no, for it didn't. It, did, it didn't decode anybody. Okay, so what can you see? All right, settings. Now, what I was saying, but uh, was that one of the contest um, uh, group one of things you can do is a hundred watts and a wire. Ah, true XDX audio over cat. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so we changed the rig to the uh, true SDX audio over cat. So I might have to recycle this here, but let's see. No. Okay. Let me let me double check to make sure it's still in place. It is. <laughs> And I do have the right, yeah, I do have the right baud rate. We want all of these standard here. Yeah, okay. So now um, I'm going to end that. I'll just end all these. Nope, definitely not that. And, okay. There's literally like nothing on this tablet. Okay, go back to the serial connection. Rig connected successfully. 14.074 is where we want to be. That's where the action's at. Oh, it's still not... It's not over here. It's on CW right now. Okay, so hold on. I gotta... Apparently I have to tune this. Oops. Does it have USB digital? Yes. Well, not digital. It just has SS USB. That's all you really need anyway. Those those two guys, uh, you know, you go to their website. It does make you angry. So many people will bootleg them. But those two guys really, really deserve a, some kind of ham award for that thing. That is the coolest little Oh, yeah, it box. is. Like, I, I mean, I, I totally love the, the hacker aspect of all of this. It, it feels very much in that vein. I love it. Okay, so it it's picking up FT8 noises. So now we need to get FT8 noises onto the tablet. I'm showing strange not... antenna looking things. 
Not getting it. How does the tablet do audio? Uh, via the cable. So the, the radio is yeah. supposed to kick all that out over CAT. Over CAT? I thought it actually yeah. had a sound card. No, the, it, it should do it all over CAT now with the with the version 2.0 oh. that's on here. The firm It has the, the newer firmware. Oh, okay. I haven't upgraded my firmware. I did it the old with the old firmware. Right. Which uh, you had to have the uh, sound card or the audio plugged in. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to baud rate, 1900. Let's give it a second, and we may have to pull up the instructions here. We'll see. Okay, no. So let's let's kill the application again. Run it over again. Start it over. Select the serial port. Yes. Connected successfully. Mm. Current frequency. Sure. Why not? It thinks it's on that frequency. And we've obviously, I can hear the signals coming out of this on the stock speaker. Okay, not there yet. All right. So, and a free smoke show. Good. All right. So, with that said, let's get back. You're not letting the smoke out, are you? That's it. I let the smoke out. All right. So, back on the website, if you go to, not this one. Get out of there. Where is it? Oh, I see. I see what you did there. Let's go back. All right. Go back up to manual. So if we do cat. Okay. So cat usage, it talks about having the uh, the mic set up. So once upon a time, you had to use an audio cable and then have a second cable for doing like PTT slash mic. And it was basically using the, uh, it was it was bridging the sleeve and the ring together to be able to do that. But if you scroll down, digital modes without the audio cable. And so you can do all this. There are various applications to port through SDX. It's possible to do USB only, no audio cables or sound cards needed. The audio stream is transported over the cat signal. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, I am using FT8CN. That is uh, on the Androids. And yeah, that it adds a spectrum display too, which is kind of cool. I can show that off in a second. Um, all right, so there is something I I had that image. Oh, you know what? It was actually back on that eBay page. Hold on. So let let's go back. I went too far. Where to buy? And let's go back to that eBay store. And if we click on images, particularly this one, check this out. Give me, no, don't do that. Give me the full screen. There you go. Oh, that's the firmware writing. We don't want that. Bummer. That's not what I wanted. That's not going to help me. Comment. Go ahead, comment. Um, is semi QSK turned off? I was going through the true SDX forums and somebody had found a sort of a bulleted list and turning off semi QSK, setting that to off was part of his steps. I don't know. Somebody did drop a link though. Let's pull that up. Oh, okay. Uh, turn semi QSK off. Okay. So let, let's, let's see if we have that on. I haven't been able to do it yet, so I don't know if that's a setting in FT8CN or if that's a setting on the True SDX. No, it's on the True SDX. Semi QSK is off. Bummer. I was hoping it was on, so that would be easy. Uh, factory 
reset factory. Oh yeah, I haven't restore factory restore rec frequency. OTG cable Samsung. Yeah, fine. We already know that this tablet works as we did it with uh with the last live stream. We're just gonna look through these really fast. I will say that uh, I haven't tuned the frequency on this. I was off. That's an interesting... Okay, so just let me get out of this. And where's my... Just for S, S's and G's, let's tune off of this for a second. Let's see if it gets it. I don't think it will, but... What the heck? Why not try? It's making FT8 noises, so. Huh. Okay. So that is talking to this, but it didn't do cat control. It it didn't automatically change the frequency. Right? That that's the uh the issue that I noticed. And it's on USB. It's on CAT. Uh, the baud rate, just out of curiosity, let me go back here. Nope, that's not it. What happened to my link there, bud? Come on. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So it's it's advertising, and we got to use the highest baud rate, which is one hundred fifteen thousand. So okay, fine. Um, I'm going to let's do the thing again where we kill it. When in doubt you know, on Android, just go ahead and kill the process and restart it. Oh, interesting. Wait a second. It mentioned what frequency or uh, firmware I need. Not firmware, sorry, version. Oh, yeah, I've, I've got the right version. Oh! Aha! 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 <laughs> yes! Oh yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so I'm telling you, you you got to get the settings right, and you, you know, as Don would tell you, one of Don's number one tips for WSJTX. What is it, Don? I'm sorry, I didn't see what you what you did. It's restart WSJTX. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Whatever the question is, restart WSJTX. And, and just magically starts working. Yes. So, so what did we do? Okay. So let let me repeat what we did in case you guys go through this. I set this to USB upper sideband. I had to be an upper sideband. It seems to not like it being in CW. So I reset this to upper sideband. Once I did that, I think the frequency setting was marginal at best, and it actually reset this. So it's not on my little offset one thing anymore. Then once I did that, and I had the radio up and running. Uh, the the cable was connected. I restarted the application with the settings being correct, and so let let's do that again. So just like so you guys can see it, so here is the settings. Specifically, this part in the middle is what you need to worry about right here. Make sure that it's standard CAT USB. The baud rate is one hundred fifteen thousand. True SDX audio over CAT. If you're doing USB only with the OTG cable, and I have a dongle here. Let's do an OTG, which is on the go. It is a special dongle that basically allows Android devices to kind of pretend they're a computer, basically. So, okay, there's that. So what we're going to do 
now. <laughs> let's let's go to calling. Okay, those are all people calling CQ. So I'm gonna I'm gonna find a big old loud station. Uh, this zero. Where's the zero? You're the boy here. Oh, hold on. Go. There we go. That's another way of doing it because you got to hold it down. I'm not used to using this app, so. All right, so we're going to try and call that guy. And so keep an eye on this thing. I don't know what it's going to do, so let's see. Oh, it's transmitting. There's the T. Yeah, yeah, the app seems to be thinking that it's doing the thing. It's transmitting right there. See that? Hmm. And now we're back to receiving? Oh, well, maybe not. So it, okay, so it's noting that I transmitted. And it's trying again. He didn't hear me. All right, so we're going to have to call CQ after this. See if anybody hears me. Oh yeah, and my my seventy six ten is is full on wackadoo right now. I'm gonna have to lower that. I'll show you when it's transmitting again. Hold on. So check this out. There's my uh, <laughs> that's my seventy six ten. So it's it's transmitting. It's doing the thing. All right, so let's get out of this. So what we're going to do, instead of calling this guy back, I'm going to call CQ. So now I'm calling CQ. Oh, you're not seeing that. Hold on. So what you do is you click the little CQ button, and then it, it puts CQ on the heap here. So it's going to it's gonna call CQ after this. So let's see. Now I can – actually, I'm going to grab another beer, and then we'll we'll keep on trying to make contacts. By the way, shout out to our friends at Lahara Brewing Company. Not affiliated, but a really nice little local brewery in Southern California here that deserves more respect. Can't, oh, oh, was somebody calling me back already? had a problem with it um so this this app seems to know that the people that are transmitting on it are on qrp so it's constantly trying to get the app to just reply to the loudest signals and it'll it'll semi-automatically uh make contacts for you if you just kind of leave it which is nice which is nice but uh it doesn't call see it keeps going back to that other station i, I don't i won't want it to cq anymore We may have to we may have to divert to chat and have you guys call me, and then I'll, I'll call you back. So that's that's what we'll do, I think. Stop calling them. Let's see if that worked. What is it running? Oh, it's it's actually working. So here, check this out. This is funny. Ha ha! Hold on. There's what my little QRP baby's doing right now. There it is. Oh, it's it's it, okay. My seventy six ten is decoding me on the on the on the true SDX call. It I, I'm decoding myself right now. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Uh... You, you better QSL that. Yeah. You can I can I reply yourself. to myself? Is that allowed? Yeah. Can I do that? <laughs> it's funny because when I does that draw a circle. <laughs> Um, when I run my, uh, F or my, uh, flex radio over at my sister's house yeah. and I've got my Hermes up, uh, I frequently hear myself, uh, which is that's 60 miles away. I'm still able to pick myself up. WB five IMT. We're transmitting to you right now, buddy. So if you're, if you're hearing me, 
Uh, yeah, uh, my my seventy six ten is slightly upsetty, but <laughs> it's, it's not happy. <laughs> and it doesn't have an antenna at all on it, right? Uh, well, it's it's in the feed. It's in the feed, so it's uh, no the log. It's picking up the log. Loop on the ground. Well, at, at that distance, oh, okay. you, yeah, yeah. you could probably get eleven meter contacts. Uh, eleven. Yeah, yeah. Do it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I was so focused this, on this on really, doing. This is really, really bad. I have eBay open, and there's something wanting to go in a cart. This is not good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's doing the thing. Maybe it's trying. At least it's trying. We are getting out. Well, not greatly yeah, the, though. So the the yeah, those greatly. of us with the F or uh uh. True SDXs that have had them for a while. I mean, we can just load this new firmware, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly. The only thing that I'm thinking is it's really cool and all, but I mean, I've got a QDX, and <laughs> that seems a lot easier. I so, was getting ready to say that, Don. The only thing with the QDX is that the QDX mm -hmm. is only FSK. Like, it'll only do WSJTX or JSA. Like, this is actually. It's not a bad single sideband transmitter. Like I'm, I'm actually right. the, the, it, listening to it. If you know that you can't overdrive the speaker, if you dial back the volume, and you use some good ear cans or earbuds, mm -hmm. uh, inner monitors work really well. Like if you give it, if you give it decent audio with the right ohm resistance, so like thirty negative, you know, thirty three ohm resistance type of stuff, like what you use on an iPhone or whatever, it sounds good. It sounds really good. Um, mm -hmm. You you do need to go in here and do the receiver tuning, so you got to offset it a little bit based off of you know the transmit space that you're on. Um, but it, it it's 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 not bad. I mean, you, I mean, Don, you were there on my live stream where we did the the, yeah. the comparison. We were like, holy crap, that was oh, I got negative thirteen. It's coming back right now. <laughs> K seven UAP is doing it. We're doing the thing. It's working. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, Josh? Yeah, go ahead, man. Why are you doing so much JSA call recently? Uh, two things. One, I like mm -hmm. the mode. That's probably the first thing. Second thing is I've been uh, adding it to my second monitor when I'm doing video recording. So it's, it's okay. just going on in the background. Because <laughs> I've got yeah, two monitors I, I and having the logo they... on two, it was kind of like, uh, you know, it's let's do something a little bit more interesting. So there's a waterfall or JSA calls running in the background generally. Okay. Cause I, I was thinking, Oh, Josh may have some new video coming out with JS eight featured in it. Well, I, I, I won't say that that's not true, but those are the two <laughs> things I'm talking about right now. He is now. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad that there's not a JS eight app for this. Well, you know, the situation we're in with JS eight, it's, it's yeah, not yeah, a good yeah. scene, un unfortunately, because I think that um, I don't know the background of the developer. I don't know anything about it other than um, if somebody wanted to pick up the uh, it's been forked a couple of times. If somebody wanted to pick up the mantle on JS8 and continue to develop it like you'd have a really good platform to build upon there. Like there's a lot yeah. of stuff that could do it. It's it's a pretty good piece of piece of software. Yeah, the first thing I would do is to uh, bring it up to the current version of WSJTX. I'll be honest, Josh, I can't figure out how to make it work correctly. And it's it's all me, I'm sure. But Do you know how many videos I've made on JSA called? I even had yeah. Mike. And I've I had Mike. Every but... one of them. And but no... I, I didn't get I didn't have enough beers in me to understand oh, the mic thing. The, the yeah, one it's... with Mike, I figured that that had to kill all the questions, right? I mean, yeah, but sure. I can't. When I'm wanting to use it, nobody's wanting to call back to me. See, I I haven't used. Uh, I oh, haven't I have no it. problem getting a spot back. Yeah, get go on forty meters. I I realize twenty's somewhat active, but forty has always worked for me. Now, not during the day, but in the evenings, you get on 40 meter JS8. There's all there's always a bunch of people on there. I, I haven't used JS8 since it was still FT8 call. If that tells you how long ago. If anybody wants one of these radios, there's one in the HRCC swap at the moment for 110 bucks. 
There you go. There you go. Can they ship to the UK, Mike? No, I'm not just saying it's in the swap. I, I don't want one. He's just being helpful. This so, thing looks like a ham radio flipper. It, it, uh, uh, the integrate, uh, I mean, the software integration is pretty, actually. Uh, God, how do I put this? What it can do on paper is beyond what most QRP radios can do. But then at the same time, you have QRP labs, which is also kind of blowing the doors off of that whole concept. Um, it, it at the same time is a, is a challenging radio from just radio capability radio things. Let me just be really clear. It, it is a, a hobbyist radio. Oh, we did it. We we got we're we're, we're finishing a QSL with a K i5 dxy thank you buddy so there we go we're gonna we're gonna get a log in the contact with or a contact in the log it, it, it's it's a finicky a radio or nine it's a it's a finicky radio mm -hmm. say again mike so there's a hot water nine in the in the swap swap as well i know yeah i i, I have a i'm i'm about the hot water eights and i do have one now so I, I will uh I will give a shout out here. So if you if you're if you're uh if you're looking at my knob and you're like that's a nice looking knob mm. for Mike uh, in the chat, he's probably loving that. But uh, go make sure you check out one K six ARK's tuning knobs for the True SDX because mm. that's exactly what I have. I did go with the smaller one and I did have to. Uh, scale it up to 101 percent to be able to fit on to no right now hold on uh i did have to scale it up to 101 percent to be able to fit onto the chop down tuning knob that i did but yeah it works great good looking good looking knob so there you, there you go if you if you're into into 3d prints that's that's what you're seeing there i printed that bad boy Oh, now, now it's it's getting it's getting real uh, antsy in the pantsy. It's trying to make a Canadian contact, so it's it's trying to reply back. By the way, I haven't done anything. The the app is just continuing to roll. It's looking at the next station. It's like, yeah, sure, go for that one, go for that one, go for that one. So it's uh, it it, it does want to make contacts for you. I'll say that up front. Wait, you're not having to pick them? Oh, uh, man. sure. Yeah, I clicked lots of buttons. Absolutely. Well, you did trying to get it working. So. Now, come on. He knows that disclaimer. We know it doesn't get little red boxes in the corner. Yeah, it's just yeah. going, man. It's going. It, it's an Android. What do you What do you want from me? It's just doing the yeah, thing. What's that, what's that app that does it for? I mean, you install it on top of WSJTX. And it JT does Alert? Basically... No, no, no. JTZ. It's... Yeah, JTZ. Oh, JTZ, That's it. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, T.O. did a thing on that one time, and I installed it, and I could never get it back off again. See, now, and I always tell people, no, FT8, it doesn't do it automatically. You have to actually go and pick the station. Yeah, sure. Well, that's I mean, it. you certainly can. That That's one way to do it. but That's the only way I've ever done it. No, I mean. <laughs> I've never you, cheated. <laughs> you, weren't an, you weren't around when Endpoint was around. Oh, yeah, Endpoint. Yeah, he, he pops around occasionally, but yeah, he yeah, was he, he was fully semi-automatic with his uh, FT8. Yes, he would he would be asleep at night and was making FT8 contacts for him, just like a Cuban station. Oh yeah, yeah I know that station. I've talked yeah. to him, oh, probably a thousand times without wanting to. So it, uh, interestingly CLL enough, eight it, C no C O eight uh, C O eight L Y yeah. yeah. It it does seem to give up. No, it's it's really it's really on board with this oh what I don't know what's happening. K zero P U I. It it really wants to make a contact with them, so it's gonna try real hard for that. I'm not doing anything right now. This is this is just it. Living and its I, best life. I assume that the radio doesn't overheat or anything like that. Oh, it's a good question. Are you running a full five? Yeah, the connector slightly. I think it said six point four just now. Six point four watts, though. Yeah, they are six point one. See, I would back the power down to like. Top of the display. 
I would back the power down to two and a half watts. That I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> Are you talking on oh, the power supply? Yeah, no, okay. no, in the power, the power out from the true SDX. You can you can turn the power drive. down. Okay. TX drive setting. Okay, let's do that. Isn't that what the mallet's for? Yeah. I mean, if you don't mind smoking it, Josh, go ahead. But uh... I've got four of them. <laughs> what do you know? Anybody know what uh, menu setting it is? It should be a. A TX drive setting, TX drive, set it or, to two or one. Or... I, I remember it saying something like PWR, but. Anybody know what menu option it is? No. no man. It's ahead, focusing on your hand and on the screen. Comment. Go ahead, comment. There should be a setting on the true SDX called yeah, no. TX drive. Yeah, do you know what number it is? Uh, I think four is is recommended for single sideband. No, but what menu three. option? What menu option? Uh, I, I don't know that often. It's uh, TX drive and TX delay are next to each other. Oh, it's at four. So you could bring that down and that'll reduce your power. Okay, let's wait for it to stop transmitting. <laughs> stop. Okay, there we go. TX delay is zero. TX drive is four. So you're saying bring it down to three? Yeah. Sure, why not? Three or two even. But whatever. Whatever. We'll blow it up. Oh, now it's a uh, three, three watt output, putting out the yeah. whole three watts output of the true SDX. If I smoke uh, one, and uh, I'll just I buy think... another one before the uh, the giveaway. I, I'm giving three uh, of these away at the camp out. So, uh, well, we have way more giveaways. By yeah. the way, I, I continue to be amazed by Powerfilm Solar. Those guys are just so awesome. They have a number of uh, solar panels that we're going to give away at the camp out, which is just insane. Wow. So if you're if you're able to come out, oh my gosh, you got a good yeah. chance to get walking away with some really cool stuff. It's a long walk from the UK. It, I know, man. I know, but you know, well, we have what, what, what better to, to be on a plane for sixteen hours just to go camp in a tent? <laughs> I'm sure that would be great. When are you going to camp out at Montesano? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I will. To be honest, uh, nothing. Nothing against the pavilion scene or the campout scene, but that that embassy suites, man, it's it's pretty it's nice. It's too easy, right? It's too easy it, just it's, to walk yeah, across that sky bridge. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Thing. Adam has seen me. I'll, I'll camp. I'll hike. I'll do the whole thing. I I'm happy to do it. I love it. But you give me the option of like going to camp or have a really nice ham fest experience where you you never leave air conditioning unless you want to from your hotel to the ham fest. It's unheard of. It's amazing. It's it's amazing. Well, and I don't know if it's like this every year, but man, I was outside every day all day long and i never got hot or anything it was just so great well it's it's and i would cooler I, out there. I, that I was last year yeah i know <laughs> two I years ago it was, like it was that. very humid oh yeah i've been there before and it was like 90 something degrees outside although yeah. again i didn't go up to my sano and i know it is you there is that little gradient that you hit when you go up there so well, two years ago thing, it was huh? very humid i was i was i was humid sticky uh, anytime I stepped out of the uh, the hotel, well, you live yeah. in California, so you you don't really have high humidity out there, do you? Uh, gets into the eighties, maybe. No, that's temperature humidity. No, eighty percent, eighty percent humidity. Oh, eighty percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it it can get pretty pretty humid in in Huntsville. Yeah, here it can get a hundred percent and stay that way for days. So, in, I mean, in but... Florida, forget it. That's like a thousand percent. But but yeah. with respect, I, I'm I'm uh, I feel like I have a barometer that's tuned appropriately. Uh, mm. I I went I spent a lot of time working out of the East Coast, out of Virginia, and that is a hundred percent with with extra 
vapors. Yeah. Like it, it, it gets and the and the cicadas are rolling. It it's different. Like no, I, I'm with you. I, I know the difference between the two. And Huntsville yeah. can get pretty humid. Yeah, and I and I've stayed at I've stayed at Embassy Suites. You know, my my wife loves it yeah. there. But then we stayed at um, Airbnbs, which was cool the first year because we had a great one. The second year we wanted the same one, and then the lady's like, "Oh, well, we have a regular guy that comes into town and he needs it." This is after we booked it, mm-hmm. and can we move you to this other one? And we wound up in downtown Huntsville at this uh, place that. Looked like a boarding house. Yeah. Well, I've I've heard bad things about that Airbnb because not not that specific one, but Airbnb itself. Because like you saw what happened to Jim and uh, <laughs> yeah Jim last year when they went to and the and the thing is foreclosed. And I thought that oh that's just such a unique thing. It's really not. Yeah. Because they're they don't Airbnb or that company that's putting those things on the website they don't check anything so a couple of housekeeping things to hit on here Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see PSK reporter what's the name of the app so I am using oh gosh what is it hold on we'll we'll do this a different way what is it FT8CN or something like that FT8CN I believe hold on hold on so if we go back to the web and wrong guy, uh, FT8CN, which is on yeah. Android. This is an Android app. By the way, I have a video coming. I, I don't have the device yet, but I have. I think I have found the best cell phone-like device for amateur radio. I think I found it. Mm. So I will be talking to you about it. And it's not... It's not horrendously priced. So FT8CN, oh. uh, just for everybody that, that wants to know, it's not a Android Google Store thing. You don't just uh, type that in and get it. You actually have to Google FT8CN on the device, find the GitHub, and then do the install. And it's a one file. You download it, and you click on it, and it will load it. And then it's it's loaded. Once you do that, though, it, it works great. Okay, so there was that. Thank you for your comment. Appreciate it. Hey, Josh. Yeah. This is Jagger here. I had a quick question. I, hey, I'm Jagger. How you been, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. How you doing? I'm good, yeah. Uh, I've been good. Um, I'm late to the game here, but I just had a question. How accepting do you think Randy's audience would be of you on his channel uh, doing a live stream? Because it seems like we're all super excited. We love the guy, but what do you think? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever talked about that. What do you think? Well, I've been on his channel multiple times uh, as being a part of a video, but yeah, uh, but I'm thinking I'm thinking of like a live stream. I wonder if, if his audience would even go for that. So to date, I don't think Randy's done a live stream on his channel. So yeah, I'm not sure. He, I'm not sure he has either. Yeah, I, I I don't know that that's on the horizon for him. I mean, he already said on the video that. He doesn't really reply to people that email him or anything like that. So um, I don't know. I don't know if, if he's interested in doing live streams. I think he might be really happy with uh, his the, the performance his videos get just doing videos, right? Yeah, I, so kind of, I, I wish I got on here, here earlier and could ask him. I don't, he might not go for it, but I, I just think it would be interesting because hams are like really excited about his channel, but I wonder if it goes the other way it probably doesn't Mm. well the the thing is and again i i go back to my experience here which may not be typical Mm -hmm. but a lot of the gmrs guys here are literally hams right and 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 i think honestly i i think that um i think that there's like two major contingents within his community of people that watch it's people that are like die hard i will not get licensed or their preparedness communications adjacent and their hams <laughs> like i think that's i think that's really what it is and, and a ton of other people that are just like i don't know anything about this what is this but if like you had to pair people up well he he talks about more than just jmrs doesn't he on his channel not 
really? I mean, it, like he he talks about amateur radio is kind of just because they're amateur radios, but he generally only hits uh, handheld radios and mobile radios. Like he doesn't do mm-hmm. HF. He is no. Yeah, but no, no, no. But I mean, he. I mean, you know, is I. I've watched a couple of his videos, but I don't follow him regularly. But you know, I thought that, you know he was more into the the whole uh, you know the whole purpose, not a Rubicon. Well, it's not a you know he's in the that going out outlanding or whatever they call that you know on the jeep overlanding. Stuff. Jeep, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's an off-roader first. He's not really an overlander. So if anybody wants to know the distinction for that, uh, we'll get to the questions, too. We'll wrap things up with the questions. But So overlanding is an off-road situation where you're getting to a point where you're out in the middle of nowhere, and then you camp, and you hang out, you camp, and then you pack it up, and you and you boogie out. So a lot of times the overlander guys have like, you know, rooftop tents or all that stuff is based in the vehicle. So the vehicles are generally not super rock crawlery. They're they're like off-road. They're they're extremely off-road capable, but they're not like rock crawlers. So Randy uh and what he does is like more down the rock crawler side. Like he's going through some very complex off-roading stuff. Like if you just watch my video with him, or his video with me, uh, he he's doing some relatively complex stuff. Like when he takes people out, and by the way, that's what he does on the Saturday. So normally he's not available on a Saturday because he takes people out, and, and he continues to do this all the time. He takes people out on these off-road tours where he'll teach people how to be proficient in off-roading. That, that's really like one of his big passions. And he continues to just you know take people out and educate them on that, which is great. And, you know, he factors radio into all of that, which is super cool. Um, but right. they're well, generally more towards the complex technical side of off-roading than the uh, I'm going to go on a dirt road to get to a campsite and off-road kind of thing. Right. And that was my point is is what he's focused on, the GMRS radio is a tool for him. It's yeah. just a tool for his hobby. Yeah. Whereas our hobby is radio. <laughs> so. You yeah, know, and he, he's said that multiple times. He, he he's commented on that multiple times. That uh, yeah, it's it's Randolfo, not Randy. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you everybody that's correcting me. Uh, so Randolfo, yeah, he he looks at it as a tool to do his hobby, which is off roading, and it all lines up with that. He just happens to also have a very like finger on the pulse of uh, what people want to watch, and he makes the content that people want to watch. I mean. He's he's got tons of views uh, for for his different video stuff that he does. Yeah, spotter and and driver communication is one hundred percent has to be done correctly. Yeah, and that's what his thing is. It's his jam. Yeah, and he's good at it. Yeah. He's real good at it. Oh yeah, your videos have shown that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I <laughs> thank you, Jody. I, I think uh, I think my much wiser me, all full blooded Irish wife, and her do tend to default to wise Irish women. She said there's three important things with anything, and she's always said, it. "Is it good? Is it kind? And is it necessary?" And that's probably why I don't watch Randolfo anymore. The- is it good? Is it kind? It's probably not kind. Is it necessary? I think all communications is necessary. So is it good? It's good for you in the sense that I think he does his tutorial videos and stuff and like how he he regardless of what you think about his video production quality, he does get the information out that he says he's going to do. He's he's never really clickbaited anybody or done anything like that. It's not necessarily kind to the people who are not kind to him. Now, you know, we dipped into a little bit, but he has a bit of a channel that has turned into the skid, if you will, on trolls. And he, he has he's done well by communicating back to the trolls. And then that just creates the echo chamber of more trolls. And he's flourishing off of that, if you will. Take that what you will, but that's uh, exactly what it is. It's not yeah. kind, and baiting people is never necessary. Well, I don't think he's baiting though. 
do do you think he's baiting? I think he's replying to like if if you punch me and I punch you back harder, am I the aggressor? I I feel like that's what he's doing. I think he's just he's he's hitting back equally as hard or harder to the people that aggress against him. And that's probably why a live stream for him would probably never be. It would be very. Well, I mean, would, he was on mine, and and you know there was people you know, in the chat that were not kind, but at the same time, it's like I I think he was very well spoken. He he didn't hold back from answering any questions I ans I asked of him. Like, is there anything I should have asked him that I didn't? I'd ask him in the next live stream, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you you've got a good a good mix and a good audience that you know like well rounded, and I think that. He would probably, if he was to do a live stream, I could, I could see things degrading quickly. That's probably, I, and that's probably why he does I, I recorded think, videos. I think that, I think that you might not be. I don't think so. I, I think actually, yeah, I if he either. did a live stream, I think that it would be incredibly successful. I, I, I don't, I don't know that he'd be able to do it week in and week out on GMRS. No offense, it's not his fault. It, it's GMRS's yeah. fault. Um, he could do it for a very long time, but at some point, it's like you know, GMRS is it, it, one. It's a one trick pony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Like the, the, I, I think he's yeah. covering all the bases with his videos, and he's doing a great job at it. And, and, you know, and it's, it's a lot not people. like you said; it's not his main hobby. That's just a right. side part of his hobby. Right. So he's covering it in you know a way of here's this new material here's this he in a live stream it's just like what you do you pick a topic and then you go over that topic and whatever and he would have to do the same thing and that and that means unlike say car or the clubhouse where they interact with the chat on a regular basis i bet randy wouldn't even interact that much and i think a lot of what Jeff is talking about yeah. would have to be from his interaction with the audience. I just don't think that would occur. Uh, I, we're speculating a, not, a lot right now. We're we're off sure. the off yeah because he does a little bit speculating. Now, no offense to Coffee and Ham Radio because again they have really good personalities that answer questions and you know I think they probably engage with the community a little bit more on their you know primary live streams because yeah. uh, I I've always said. You know, if I'm going to do a live stream, I'm going to make it about something, and I'm going to do that thing. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll integrate comments and questions, but it, it's not nearly as much as what I would call the the streamyard chats are like, where you've got the yeah. you know, squares of people talking. That's more of like a hangout type of situation, which I like, but there's so many people that are doing it. Right. There's no point for me to try and coordinate something like that. I'd rather keep it focused to like a, a project or an effort that we're mm -hmm. working on. Uh, that's kind of always been my jam from the beginning. I've I've made no quorums about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to say that you don't. You know, I, I, I didn't. You do. You yeah. just. They've got four guys, and they got yeah. one guy generally watching yeah. the chat, and that's all he does. I, I took I took so no offense from your comment. I yeah, I, I agree okay, with sorry, everything I mean, you said. Uh, I, okay. I I'm just like. I, I want to keep this focus when I do the main live stream. When we get in the right. after chat, we can just go nuts with all kinds of – we've been going nuts with all kinds of BS. And but, we haven't gotten to the movies yet. Oh, I've been watching so, something. I've Josh, been watching I've been something. watching you too. for years, and you are remarkably diplomatic. I've seen you get poked and, and seriously agitated after four beers. That oh, I've I've definitely got there. Definitely diplomatic got there. <laughs> to the extreme. You don't say I don't care. You generally try to make everybody diplomatically happy, and that is the correct way to do it. Uh there, there's no correct way, and, and I would point to not a Rubicon. He he is very successful. He passed Jason. He's got more subscribers than Jason. So you can say, well, he has a more accessible. Uh, you know, radio service that he's working with. Yeah, sure. That's a factor for sure. But he, he brings something so different to the table that nobody's done, right? He's got his own thing that he's doing and it's successful and he's just doing, he's just cranking on it, right? He was literally talking to me before and he was like, yeah, no, I'm just cranking videos. I'm just doing it. And you can see that his post rates have gone up mm -hmm. significantly. Um, as far as me, yeah, thank you for the kind words. Twitter I appreciate that. Too. Yeah. He he's got time to be able to rock all this stuff, and he's doing a he's he's regardless of whether you like his content or not. Um, 
he's he's working the algorithm as far as I'm concerned. YouTube's mm-hmm. like, yes, give me more. Give me more of what you – it's ambrosia for the algorithm. He's killing it out there right now. He actually did a video specifically talking about that. Like, the more you do this, yeah, the more I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, and, and he's not wrong because he's getting views on it, right? Mm-hmm. So that that's the that's the funniest part about it is he's created this reverb effect where the negativity that comes to him and he gives back the negativity just creates more views in the form of videos that he's making that just doot, 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 doot. He, he's like that dude. That dude is getting like a million views a month, which is very high for any radio anything that's out there right now like if you look at uh tech minds ringway manchester those guys get like really mm-hmm. high views too and he's like he, he's even a high higher than them right now i went through a period of like three months where i was like right there at the at the one million mark um but that's hard to keep driving at that point like it i i, I mean i hope that people are getting more interested in communications and we all of our views go up together but just where he's at right now, if you look at the numbers, he's 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 doing very well. The only thing I could see is he would definitely need a moderator that knows him really well to get him mm-hmm. uh, in the direction. Yeah, uh, my guess is he doesn't want to do that. Yeah, I oh, mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I I, I don't think he. It, it's kind of like. If you were if you were uh, Mrs. Toll House and you made a chocolate chip cookie that everybody really liked, you don't need to start making cinnamon rolls. <laughs> you can just keep making cookies. It's fine. Just keep make, keep cranking on the cookies. It's fine. And he has no reason to change anything. There's no there's no re- now taste may change around that. Right. That's the reality of everything. I mean, I've been on Char- YouTube long enough to know, know that so that I- changes. A Toll House cinnamon roll sounds pretty good, right? About now. Well, I mean, yeah. So maybe, maybe, right? Put a little chocolate chips in your cinnamon roll. But I mean, that's the reality of YouTube: is that you, you, you're you're constantly probing the periphery, right? And you're like, does this fit? Yeah. Does this fit? I mean, my whole video, like, I could I could go live with the NES right now if I wanted to. Um, my whole playing around with that, like, uh, full quiet, I don't get a, like barely any views on that. I get a lot of views on Twitch, but not a lot of views on YouTube when I when I play this video game, but then I get the diehard people that follow me that are like, you need to do more of this. It's like, so do I do it? Because, um, you know, that's always the big thing. It's like, I can crank out Baofeng videos, but that's boring for me. It'll burn me out. I won't want to do it. I won't want to continue doing it. That's why I don't do it. I, I love doing the full quiet video live streams but not a lot of people watch right so it's it's a balancing act and i'm i'm getting into the weeds a little bit about being a youtuber but that's the reality of mm-hmm. it is, is there there's a balance you strike somewhere and he's found a balance and it's doing well for him so he should just keep cranking that be that monkey grinder and keep cranking that crank well, you do uh provide uh um legitimate service to a lot of people and i do believe uh having spent many decades in the community of real survival and being an instructor and a scouter the more you pursue that direction the the more new people you're going to bring to your channel because yeah having radios that work in survival situations not prepping but actually out there hey i'm out there i need my radio to save me our group you will draw a lot of people our group is large there. You know that. You're in with the right people. I mean... Uh, I also it, have a comment on this, it, it's so, if it's I so, may. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take your comment in a second. It, it's hard. I don't, let me just say, I never sat down and said, like, here's my game plan. I never had, like, the, the, the Justin Feige, or is that the guy's name from the Marvel Universe, where you just Kevin laid out... Feige. What's Kevin, it? yeah, Kevin, Kevin, where you where you laid out like the ten years of Marvel. Like I never, I never planned to do anything like that. I just kind of adapted to things that like I thought people would want to watch that were also something I would want to talk about. So I, I, I'm old enough now, and I've been doing YouTube long enough where I know that where my interests are and where the audience is meet. That's where we have the most fun. Period. At the same time, I know that having these discussions that we do on the after chat is my least viewed videos period 
They don't they don't trend anywhere. But to me, I think this is where the the real work gets done. I I don't know of another YouTuber that spends hours live streaming about radio questions and and has a community on Discord. Literally, you guys are hanging out here to try and help out. And and I think to myself, it's like I should let them talk more. And you know, we, we're always trying to. I'm I'm always trying to do that, but like it doesn't really exist. Like there's nothing like this. And so I think about all the people that don't have clubs, and I think about all the people that don't have hams that they can call. And I think about all that stuff. And I and I go back to the core tenant of what I think the importance is on on, on my channel is getting people on the air. That's my that's my thesis like if you had a business statement is get people on the air so the after chat is fundamentally to me one of the 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 benchmarks of of what i do is regardless of what you watch all the fancy videos (laughs) regardless of whatever level of fancy you call my videos bring people into the after chat and have them ask their questions join the community and and literally this discord is the is the best discord no question for answering questions and being 24 seven and helping people out unparalleled uh, takes nothing away from others. They're also good, but, and then we have the after chat, which no one does anything like this. Get your questions answered to the best of our ability collectively. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. And, and I, and I want to make that as welcoming as I can period. So that, that's my thought. And tens of thousands of people have gotten licensed because of your help. Tens of thousands would be an amazing number if that's true. I don't know if that's true, but I would take that to the bank. I'd cash in all my AWRL chits. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, though. I, I, I would love to say tens of thousands of people got licensed because of me, but, oh, man, that's that's a that's a huge milestone. But how would you ever factor that in? I don't know how you'd prove that. I think the collective uh, goes to your stall. <laughs> I sure. think the collective approach of all the like the YouTubers just doing what they're doing, just even having the conversation about amateur radio and even GMRS or any yeah. of that stuff, just gets people more involved. I mean, it's it's increasing people getting licensed for sure. Hundred percent, absolutely. That that's the best part about this is. I do my thing. I'm happy to do it. Love to do it. I, I love to be engaged with you guys and talking and going through these questions and all that stuff. And I still got a question here. We're going to get to it. Don't worry, Jeremy or Jeffrey. Sorry. Um, and then they do their own thing like Ham Radio Clubhouse. I I, I tell you what, I, when I'm driving home because <laughs> I was at work, I'll put the Ham Radio Clubhouse on and I'll just listen to those guys rant and have a good time. Love that. I love TO and what they're doing, Coffee and Ham Radio. Love all that stuff. I watch those guys too. Maybe not necessarily when they're live because I'm asleep, but uh, you know, there, there, there is. A, I'm not going to say I did it because I don't. I don't think that's true. But years ago, when I said we need more content creators, I, I think that as a byproduct of either of me or Ham Radio Concepts at the time, uh, the OG Jason making more content people are like we need to get in on this because for whatever reason i'm not gonna say why you got involved in it um but they started making videos and it's been everything it's been positive we have a really good community of of content creators that work together with very little animosity and we we have a good time it's been fun it's it's been great for like five years it's been awesome wait 2018 so yeah like now Seven years, seven years of that. It's awesome. Six years, yeah, six years. Pretty cool. It's been a great time. Um, somebody said they had a comment. Go come back with the comment, and then we'll we'll try and take some questions. Then I got to head out here. Yeah, I just had a uh, comment on the survival radio statement. Um, I, I I have a team of folks. We operate 
in Alaska, in particular the Arctic Circle. And uh, besides just amateur radio, there's also, for folks that are going to be operating out truly in the middle of nowhere, I would recommend it's worth the investment. Get onto either a commercial band service with your local search and rescue team if they have repeater networks set up specifically for it, or invest in satellite, <laughs> invest in an Iridium setup. It's worth every penny. How, how's it, So uh, immediately when you said Arctic Circle, how's the Iridium connection when you're in the Arctic Circle? Is that degradated in some way, or how, how's your connection? So it it depends on what you're doing. So I I, I work with a company, or rather, I'm I'm the DO for a company called Aquasi. We do large drone flights in the Arctic Circle, and oh. we actually use Iridium as the primary control link uh, when operating long distance UAS flights. It depends on it. It was a lot worse back in the day, but Iridium is one of the few satellite network providers where they have continuous coverage in the Arctic Circle. Most satellites, generally, with most providers these days, will have paths that take it over the Arctic Circle. Um, however, there are still, for example, Starlink still has periods, true gaps in coverage. If you compare it to things like Iridium, Iridium is one of the only satellite services outside of you know government satellite services that has true 24-hour uptime in those situations. The performance is fine, though. It's not crazy. The The big factor that you have to deal with is the azimuth that those systems are shooting at mm -hmm. is a lot lower. So your antenna selection has to be very particular, especially if you're doing anything that's critical like uh, command and control link for UAS. Is, is a lot of your control commands, like, semi-automated in the sense that you're, like, go to this location for flight plan, follow the flight plan, go home land kind of thing is there some what of a automated plan in the drone you're yeah, not so flying by you wire generally yeah. yeah so you generally will update an autopilot plan yeah. um and then it'll fly the autopilot plan and then you use the satellite for kind of a think of it like a constant heartbeat message where you're yeah. monitoring the aircraft like a check and its systems yeah yeah you could manually override it and take control of the aircraft with a couple second delay um, that's not necessarily for the faint of heart but generally unless there's an emergency the only thing that you would do if you had to make an update is you would push a new autopilot mission to the aircraft over the iridium link um, and there are checks and balances on that in order to make sure that the aircraft doesn't receive incorrect data so y'all have the latency figure uh, figured out right yeah, so when it comes to satellite latency, depending upon what you're using, um, generally, latency does move, uh, just physics tells us that, um, but depending upon what variety of Iridium link you're using, you can have anywhere from a two-second delay all the way up to a six-second delay, depending upon which satellite it's talking to and when. Yeah. And yeah, it's no joke. We're, what we're doing, I mean, two seconds is way out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But... You know, I mean, again, if you're used to it, it's not a not a big deal. Well, that's why. Well, it beats the alternative, too, right, right? Right. Which is right, nothing. Right, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. That's good. Good comment. Um, let's hit this one really who, fast. Who pays for all that service? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, various different government contracts. It's we're with the university. I'm with the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and it's a whole program. So nice. we receive state, federal funding, and self funding through projects and other things. Uh, Arctic research is a big deal. Um, Arctic research will continue to be a big deal, um, and we do a ton of it. Um, just as a function of the Arctic is an incredibly dangerous place to fly, and uh, it's a lot easier to sacrifice a half a million dollar drone than it is to get, have somebody go missing in the Arctic Circle. Isn't that crazy? That's wow. Oh, are you doing surveying? Is this like land map survey kind of thing? Oh, I'm yeah, now surveying. I'm... Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Starting... Survey work. The whole the whole ten yards. I can go into a whole spiel about it later. I don't want to take over in live stream here. No, I, I I did I did a thing. I started asking questions when I uh, if, if if it's a mission statement, I don't really understand. It's not necessarily the time to ask lots of questions. <laughs> so I'll send you I'll send you a web link. I'll send you a web link. We can talk. All right, offline. there you go. There you go. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, let, let's mad, do this. Mad respect. So let, let's do this. Let me uh, let me answer this question. Can you recommend a 100 watt backpack portable radio for Poda in the one to two thousand dollar range using a DX Expedition antenna? I think he meant uh, DX Commander, maybe DX Expedition. I'm not sure what he means. Yeah, the Expedition is a model. Yes. Oh, the DX Commander Expedition. Okay, let's right, let's go right. with that. 
Uh, yeah, Yesu FT8 891. That would be the that would be the spot, and that leaves you some money left over for a battery and a solar solution if you want to go that route. So, yeah, that'll get you easily into two thousand dollars for a decent sized battery. Uh, again, scale it to be backpack portable, and then you could probably even cram fifty to hundred watts of solar and a charge controller in your backpack without a lot of uh, issue if you go with. Uh, uh, if you take my link in the description to Gigaparts for their Explorer series, or you check out, same link to Gigaparts, uh, check out the Powerfilm Solar stuff. They're all really, really good. Really good panels. So, yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, last thing. <laughs> it's for Dawn and, and Mike. Yes. Uh, N-A-Y-O. Uh, what have you been watching? So I'll, I'll answer first. I've been watching the three-body problem. Have you watched that? Don? I the, I just started it, and I was going to ask you if you did that. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Yeah, I, I'm well into it. In fact, well, my wife and I will mm. probably continue on. Um, have you read it? No, I have not read it. Okay. Mm. It, it, that, that would be a tough show to watch without having read it. There's oh. a lot that goes out very quick. Oh, I liked it so did far. You, uh, but so, I, I just found out who the founder is, so... So That's Jeff and uh, and Mike, you you both read it. Yes, sir. I have not read it. No, oh, I've only seen okay. the series. How how far does it diverge from the book, from the main tenets? I guess not far at all. That's oh. why I'm loving it so far. It's it's sticking pretty close. There there's uh, I, I there's probably people in here who haven't watched it yet, so I don't want to give any spoilers yeah. away. It's it's um, onesie twosie things. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's it's sticking pretty close to the books. Okay. The one of the complaints, uh, the, the book was written by a Chinese author, and most of the main characters in the book are Chinese. They kind yeah. of, and they've right. hodged, they've kind of morphed a couple of the characters and the single characters in the show, but it does not detract from the storyline. Yeah, there, yeah, are, there are, there uh, are, there are a couple of scenes. By the way. For anybody that 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 knows me, when I talk about like what I like and what I don't like, this show has taken me out of it in few moments. There was one part in the show that drove me up the wall when um, I can't remember her name, but it was the uh, the Asian scientist, the physicist, yeah. and she... there's multiple. <laughs> Yeah, there's multiple of them. Well, not in the, yeah, not in the show, not in the show though. The the female, okay. Um, the female lead, basically. Right. She goes to a meetup for people that are of the the group. I won't go into a more detail than that. And the the military slash police raid it, and they get them all down on their knees. They've all capitulated. They're all giving up, and they do a scene where some of those cops or whomever grab her specifically and take her out. There is no situation where someone that is an informant or someone that's in inside, if you will, with the military slash police would be the first one they would drag out. There's no situation where they would do anything that would divulge their identity as being an informant. And that scene just took me right out of it that I was like screaming. <laughs> I was like, and, that, and that's basically the point up to I've seen. There, there is well, no, there's thing. no thing where they would drag her out. She is literally their informant that's going in there that they're recording and listening to, and that they that she's the first one after they've all capitulated. They they move through all the aisles to find her and carry her out so that everyone knows that she was inside was like no no sir that would not happen ever never never once they're in control mm -hmm. of that situation they would not do that there's no they'd, way they'd, they'd treat her exactly the same as everybody else so exactly that nobody... exactly right, right. exactly so you lose your you lose your operative at that yeah, point yeah 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 she's no longer on the mm -hmm. inside so by the way that doesn't take anything away from from literally anything it was just one scene where i was like i woke up in the morning i was like that's still bullshit this is all <laughs> like and, I was, and... Yeah, and honestly, in the books, that portion, yeah, I agree with you. That did detract a little bit for me, but in the end, that doesn't matter. Effectively, it doesn't matter. No. That's effectively what happened in that scene. Uh, the one I was looking forward to because I knew it was coming, and I am not going to say anything more than these two words: 
Panama Canal. Oh, I don't know that I'm there yet. Okay. Mm. Oh, you're not there yet? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, I, yeah I'm not there. there. That was yeah, exactly that, like the books. I'm, I'm barely oh. into the first episode, but yeah. I'm already like, what? Man, and I don't know if it continues like this, but man, is it violent. Oh, oh yeah. no, it's going to get yeah, worse. Definitely. It's going to okay. get worse. Okay. It's going to get bad. I, I, the one question I have is, how does that ship balanced properly? Don't. don't, don't uh, Jeff, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, so let's not go there. Okay. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, that uh, bothers me. I, I will say. I, 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 I'll say the books go into more detail on that one. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine? It's already pretty. It's pretty, very, it's pretty descriptive. Yeah, it's, it's very, very descriptive. descriptive in the show. Uh, well, I, I think the I think the author was an engineer. Like it, I, I'm it, it not comes surprised. Out of writing. Yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised. I, I will say though, it's been fun. So Leia is very much the the business finance. She's ex- incredibly mathematically smart. Like when uh, we, we had a discussion recently on like if you if you took a rope right and you wrapped it around the Earth and you tied a knot and it was like tight against the ground and then you realize oh oopsie. I needed to increase the the height of that rope one feet off of the ground of the earth. How much rope would you need? And the reality is it's a mathematic problem. It's it's two pi. You need two pi length of rope to do that, which for the entire earth, all you would need is over six feet of rope. I don't know if that's going to boil anybody's brains, but that's the real answer. Very much proven. That's that's what you need. And so I, I told her. Waiting... What's that? Go ahead. I was going to say I was waiting for Jon Snow to start walk out, you know. Yeah, so I, I I told her that problem, and there's multiple problems. Like, what is the three body problem? And I had to get into a little bit of you know, uh, physics. Well, obviously lots of physics, but to explain you know how gravity works and celestial bodies and all that stuff. I mean, that is a yeah. major fundamental part of the first part of the show, at least, is talking about this three body problem. That's the title of the book. But then they get into like multiple dimensions, and uh, I, I'm not, yeah. I'm spoiling a little bit a name. It's called a sophon, um, in terms of dimensional realities and and how human beings can't really conceive of dimensions beyond the third dimension and all that stuff. So we had we had some fun discussions outside of just watching it, which was good. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I, it's and, good show. and to be to be honest with you, up to this point, I'm thinking the three body problem has to do with that officer that's running around trying to figure out you know how these people have died so it may be a now, Wong, now I know Wong really from longer. marvel no the three body problem is um so if well, you I, consider you, you know what it is or you don't no i don't because i haven't i've only i'm only yeah, about he's 45 only in minutes episode. in oh he's only in the first episode so, so yeah, yeah, yeah no idea the three body problem has nothing to do with the show it, it's a thing that uh is just the reality of of space so if um if you don a wanted, physics problem. If you just if you wanted to sit okay. down and plot the the orbit of the moon against the Earth, very easy. That's a two body problem. But if you wanted to ha- figure out what the rotation of the Earth and the ISS and the moon was simultaneously and plot mm-hmm. their orbits against each other and have perfect synchronicity, it's almost impossible. Now the the ISS is probably the wrong. Um, thing to use because it doesn't really have a gravitational force that's appreciable. So if you took like the right. sun, if you took the sun, Mars and Earth and you wanted to plot how they would revolve together or separately or their relationship to each other and be super accurate, it's impossible. It's impossible to do that long enough that you could actually make a something that you could use, right? Because they mm-hmm. all have this gravitational pull that varies, right? And those subtle variations make plotting them almost impossible. And that is the three body problem at a, a pre three body problem at a very high level description. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's so cool that like there's four of us and we're already all four into it. So <laughs> Dude, it's it's pretty oh. good. My supervisor turned me out of the books uh, two years ago, and I ripped right through them. Yeah, so it, it is. Um, it's not the Expanse because that's who that's still number one with a bullet for me, but it's very good. There are two other shows I'm watching. 
I finished uh, Masters of the Air, which was it was good. It's not as good as Band of Brothers. Uh, it's better than the Pacific, I feel, but it's not number one. What it what it's what's it, what's it about? World War Two, specifically from the bomber side, specifically the European front. What and what's it show on? Uh, Apple. Service. It's on Apple TV. Apple Apple TV. Yeah. Yep. I'll That's never see it then. And then yeah. uh, you got to get Apple TV, dude. Now the shows are on now. there. Now here's a really good one. Shogun. Shogun is freaking awesome. Shogun is such a good show. It's like it's like Game of Thrones, but is actually Japanese feudal history. It is yeah. really good. What is the difference between that one and, of course, I haven't seen a damn thing on it, but and the one mini series from years ago? I don't know. I don't think I watched them. What, what do you mean the mini series? You never saw the Shogun mini series? No. Years ago? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was And it good. it was the same thing. It was about feudal Japan and you know, and these uh European explorers that came in there and they're trying to interact with the, the Japanese and yeah, that that's it. That's the the uh, yeah. So it might be it might be the same. I mean, uh, or similar plot It could be lines. the same source material even. Oh, it might be. It might be the same. Oh, that was the nineteen eighty. It's it's, it's, yeah, based, it's, it's based off the same uh, same novel. I just, so in, in in a series, they can go deeper, obviously. Yeah. Well, so, this is a, that was a series. Yeah, but it was, you said it was a mini series. Yeah, it was a mini called a mini series, but it went on for weeks and weeks. Oh, so, so a lot of people. So Hammond Hurt yeah, yeah. says it's a it's or a videotapes. Yeah, in the nineteen eighties, it was a videotape. Uh, yeah, so same concept. And by the way, those are all historically accurate characters, I think, uh, most of them anyway. I remember I think, live back or when I it came out. Else? What a series. Oh, you guys should know that the, the three-body problem is the birth of Chinese science fiction. And the man was an engineer. And it all started because he found a box of books, including Voice the Center of the Earth. So I think it's just really cool to see the Chinese science fiction starting. Uh yeah or, no I'm 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 down. Somebody yeah, I'm says, always for like uh, either science fiction or fantasy from oh, yeah, any culture, any culture. Yeah, I, I have I, no, I, I have no. There's no racial lines for my view no, about no. sci-fi. If it's I, good, I, I'm I, down. Yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong. They haven't they haven't announced a second season yet, and it, it really needs to be at least two, probably three. Yeah, because they basically mm -hmm. just covered the first book. They they started getting into the, a little bit of the second um, in the last episode. Hey, well, have they dropped all of the episodes for the season? Yeah, now, that's how no? Netflix rolls. They just they just drop. Okay, them. I wasn't Sometimes sure if they, they were playing. You know, like Disney does but, the whole. Sometimes they'll drop two, and sometimes they'll drop one. Well, that delicious in Dungeon, which I still love, is they're they're dropping one every on on Thursdays. And it's on uh, Netflix, so they don't do all of them that uh, like as a dump. But I think they do it they, depending on how they think it's going to do, or if they don't know if it's it's going to do well, they may drop the whole thing and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they I, may do that next I think season. It is they don't know whether it's going to do well, and so the ones they're going to do more that they are not sure of, they dump they dump them all. But on the, in this case, I think when they dump them all. They're going to find that because they are very good about going, hey, we got a lot of people watching this. So let's go ahead, you know, and support, put some more money into it next year and, and make it make the next season. So I, I haven't. I, I'm so glad that Turley's in it, by the way. Which one's Turley? Oh, uh, Sam, Sam. Uh, yeah, from Game of Thrones. Oh, oh that's what, really? That's Davos. The guy keep, that Davos, Davos is in there. Yes, yes. I can tell his voice. Keep watching. Keep yeah, watching. Yeah, I will. yeah, yeah. I Definitely will. I'm I have to. Anything. I have to say, I when I when I started watching, I was trying to, you know, you know, you start your mind starts gearing up, right, and you're trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I, and when I learned who the founder was, I I was like, I knew it. Oh well, well, I mean, yeah. Well, it's a Chinese woman, and they're literally showing the age ranges don't work out. Like, if right? You... No, no. But, but I mean, you know, like, 
like who it wound up being. I I was not I, surprised I, at all. I knew I that was not surprised. Yeah. I was like, oh, yep, okay. I was confirmed. Well, now, it's surpri- what surprises me about the whole thing, and I don't know, Mike might know more, but it seems odd that a book like that or a series like that would get written in the way that it is that, at least to me so far, puts a really bad uh, light on the communist system in China. So that's a really good point. So I'm watching this with my Chinese wife, and she was mm-hmm. like, oh, she's like, this is wild. None of this is like— this is all how like kind of this happened and i was like i mean this is what i learned like tiananmen square and all that stuff she's like Mm -hmm. oh yeah a lot of chinese people don't like learn this like this is not a thing that they you know grew up understanding and you know as all that stuff in the past happens when when there was the whole uprising in china oh yeah yeah she was like yeah this is like literally what happened they were like dragging out professors and cracking them in the skull and stuff and she's like, "Yeah, this is vicious." <laughs> I was like, but is yeah, it, it is. She, is it, isn't she an American at that po- at, at the, the yeah, point? Yeah, but her, her parents were like her mm-hmm. grandparents yeah, were yeah, from I China know, yeah. proper. Like literally, her route is like one generation off from China. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, the fact I, I'm, I'm talking about the fact that they're talking about the thing that happened in it. You know that that they're talking about. You know, well, with the... you would expect that to be something that the people that left the country to be talking about, not right. an author mm-hmm. of a book who who right. is an established author is, talking about is that this author thing. Author yeah. in China still is that still? Well, let me, let I, me I think that's probably yeah. Here's here's an interesting fact. There is a documentary written about this author, and it's produced by the BBC, but it's in Chinese. And 75 million Chinese people in China have watched it about this author. He has started a literature revolution. Is he in China still, though? Does he live in China? It's like yeah, still. I didn't look into that. I just know that it, beneath, when they uh, released that documentary in, in English, probably, mm-hmm. I don't know, probably will happen if he it's- keeps Becoming so notorious. But, but you understand that Leia could probably watch it now in its native tongue and, and be able to tell us what it says. But uh, it's not dubbed. It's not dubbed. No, the, the, the parts that are in the past are all in uh, Mandarin. And so yeah, she, she understands. But, but remember also, like, Leia is, is her family's Cantonese. She's only picked up Mandarin in the last, like, five years. So she can get most of it. But, you know, it's it's not... Like Chinese is a really freaking hard language to learn, uh, so she does Cantonese very well. But Cantonese is like old school kung fu movies, you know, like that kind of thing. It, it's how many not, dialects are there of Chinese? Of Chinese? So, like hundreds, two, right? A couple yeah, well, hundred. Well, I mean, the the primary ones are like Mandarin is the biggest, and then probably Cantonese, and then Chuchong, and I, there's another one that uh, is is very esoteric, but it still has. There's a lot of regional uh, dialects. Well, no, I mean, I mean, you think about like expats. Like, there's a ton of people in New York that speak various different dialects of Chinese, right? And, like, and, and, and what about you know, Mongolian? But I, I don't know what their language is, but yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, oddly enough, how many people caught all the uh, little nods that they did to Wong? from Marvel that plays the investigator that referenced the fact that he was Genghis Khan. There, there are like, uh, I caught three references to him. I gotta watch for those. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he played Genghis Khan in that uh, yes, series, did. which I really love that series Marco too. Polo. Marco Polo, yeah. Um, yeah. He, he, I love that show. They, they, they gave him multiple shout outs during that. And I was like, oh, snap. Like in the scene, people are jabbing at like Genghis Khan and he's in the scene. I was like, ah, they did the thing. It was it was pretty good. It was pretty funny. I, I, I just thought that he, he's a constant smoker. <laughs> That's my favorite part about him. Yeah, dude, that was uh, mm. that was another good show. Marco Polo was good. Honestly, oh, if you it. liked, by the way, Don, if you like Marco Polo, you will love Shogun. You will love it. You will oh, love it. Well, I mean, again, I saw the original, so if it's based on the same stuff, sure, I will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it about an Englishman who who yes. is basically? Oh, then yeah, you're gonna love it, dude. You're yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. love it. You're gonna love and it. And the the one scene I remember, and forgive me, but the the guy is there and he's trying to impress the Shogun, and he's all dressed out in in like uh, 
Japanese or uh, sorry, Japanese uh, attire. Come on. And up. the guy gets mad at him, and I don't remember why, and kicks him onto the ground, and then just pees on him. Oh, that, that's the scene I remember from Shogun because it stuck with me for all these years. You you, you, you should watch Shogun. They did a really yeah, yeah. good job. It, well, I mean, I'm still watching it, it, it and I'm, I think the new episode is out. I got to catch up on it, but it's very good. Mm-hmm. I just I just want to know when they're going to do a series like Shaka Zulu. Remember the miniseries oh. Shaka Zulu? Impairment. Well, one of my favorite movies is still Zulu, the original Zulu, uh, mm-hmm. when the, the British are in the encampment and they're besieged by the uh the zulu warriors that is a fantastic movie yeah the the one that i liked also was that one called versailles but i mean it's it's obviously french but when they do those kinds of dramas those Mm -hmm. kinds of uh uh historical type dramas just any of them i just eat it up and if they're if they're done right i mean yeah yeah i I remember like that back in the day yeah, Versailles was done really, really well because I hell I don't know anything about the the French, um, or you know, and the French aristocracy and stuff. So I, I don't know. I found oh. it fascinating. Speaking of that, uh, I haven't finished it. I've sure. I've consumed it in multiple parts. Napoleon, have you seen Napoleon? Yeah, yeah. I gotta finish. I gotta finish that too. It's it's interesting. Joaquin's a and, great and oddly actor. enough, so I, I have this really cool like weird synergy going on uh when i'm driving to work and anybody listen to the podcast i found that if i listen to audiobooks it keeps my energy up for some reason like if i'm just listening to youtube videos in the background it doesn't work the same so i've been doing uh i've been listening to the master and commander series so i'm on I've, i just finished post captain and now i'm on hms surprise by the way that author has like 20 friggin books out just on British tall ship colonial warfare, or not even colonial. It's pre mm. it's pre colonies. Freaking awesome! It's like it's so good, and they're in the the second Napoleonic War, and I'm also watching Napoleon in the background, like when I have free time, and I'm just all these things are all in my brain. I'm like, oh, this is so much craziness going on. It's amazing. It's so much fun. <laughs> I. I I don't know, man. I uh, is Mike still here? Mike's gone, right? No, I'm here. No, the other Mike. Yeah, Mike's still here. Mike, are you there? You mean G zero R F D, Mike? Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, Damn I know, I know you're here. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, are, do, do you uh, do you dive into the whole like lineage and history of uh, like the British tall ships and? All the naval a, a little history. bit, a little bit. Have you ever have you ever drawn the parallel line to like a uh, 40k and the spacefaring ships that they have, and the like, the 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 depth of human de- like just torment that they go through, and then juxtapose it to the tall ships and and all that stuff. Like there there is an interesting parallel there. When it comes to like long term I mean, sea voyaging, you know, the, the 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 whole idea of of uh, your crew is somebody that you was in the pub uh, having a, a quiet drink, and then they suddenly wake up on board a a, a ship uh, go, uh, uh, going, "Oh f- fudge, where am I?" Um, right. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, but I mean, like, like the concept of, uh, and I'm gonna get real nerdy, but the concept of like 40k and all the psychers they took just to fold space, and then most of them just died, like that—that that is almost like if you if you looked at like the the history of British tall ships and and the the naval conscription and just being a part of that, uh, and how the 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 rankings orders goes. That like you could almost draw a line like oh I can see where the lineage came from I don't know who wrote most of the the 40k novels but like you can almost see that it, it came from history it's it's really interesting when I when I when I hear these and read these things it's like wow they they have a parallel and it, it it's it comes from British naval strength and and the history there it's it's really fascinating I just finished. Uh the 40 year history of them establishing a mechanical clock versus the moon to establish longitudinal navigation in Britain. And what a story of personalities and utter, you know what, but the King was the one that ended up making that happen in 1760. They made a mechanical clock 
that That's only awesome. lost three seconds a year. Yeah, That's they awesome. um Adam Savage from Mythbusters fame, he's been there and in, in that and got to hold those things. I think he did a couple of specials about some of that stuff. Yeah, the Science Museum has a pretty nice collection of those and of course you can go to Greenwich and go and see it. They let him wind the clock. There was a version uh, four is a pocket watch the inventor made, and because it was so fragile that they've never wound it or um, serviced it, but it ended up being so popular that ships captains in in the mid 1700s would pay the ten thousand dollars to get one. Dude, oh. if you can save a you know couple of hour a couple of uh, hours a day in your transit time. That means you get your goods there first, and yeah, you does, get to yeah. sell them. You know, it makes a hell of a difference. Oh, it's so it fascinating. It months at sea because they would have to sell east to north or south, east, north or south, and they zigzag their way across the ocean until that man and his son came up with the longitudinal problem. Brass catcher, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, uh, I was looking on the Greenwich site and you could still buy watches from them Let's they're a little see. bit on the expensive side but they are mechanical watches you could buy a real pocket watch so i think well, we these got... men were just the exceptional at what they did at a time when there was a need and the government had put a almost the equivalent of a six million dollar reward for whoever solved the problem so uh brick brick Haas ask uh that is my question too work kids youtube ham radio and watching all these things what is the secret it's called compartmentalization it is do not get distracted be focused on what your goals are and then go out and achieve them um for me personally like you know scheduling with my wife and i and and where we're supposed to be and where the kids are supposed to be and having a routine routines are incredibly important when I make my videos, I have got my process to a point where I can just get in there and just crank. I can sometimes crank on two or three videos. Um, I've now got this live stream set up, like you're watching right now, where I can put out you know, multiple videos just from this, and you'll see one probably next week or the week after that is just you know, me you know, doing one of these things. Uh, yeah, man, it, it's like everything in life is like how efficient can you be? We're literally talking about a pocket watch, right? A pocket watch that people would pay like close to ten thousand dollars now, but at the time it's like considerable amount of money to improve and speed up the efficiency of information and calculation of what you're going to do. For me, that's like process improvement, better tools like my better cameras and how I would edit videos and record videos. All that stuff is is a hundred percent the factor. Every second you get back means it's a second you can put towards. What matters more, like family and all that other stuff, so they can get the same level of quality out with a little bit less time. It's good stuff. That's what we're aiming for. <laughs> yeah, I posted a link in the Discord on. It, they're called what clocks and chronometers that they used for Cook Expedition and stuff like that. So uh, there's another question. What shows are we talking about? So we covered a lot of shows, but if you're on Apple TV, the one you want to watch is Masters of the Air, I believe is the one I mentioned. That's uh, about the B-17 bomber cruise. It's really good. It, it's, it, it's like I said, it, it's not as good as Band of Brothers. It's just below that. And then, well, maybe not just below that. It's, it's above the Pacific, I would say that. And then uh, we were talking about Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem is on Netflix, and then Shogun is on Hulu, and uh, they're all highly recommended. I, I think they're all really good. Oh, I'm all right. Waiting. Well, if you want to see an example of some, you know, legitimate Chinese literature history, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that he won the Hugo Award in 2015 for that. Oh wow! And he is still in China. And the documentary was called, um, oh my goodness, uh, a production company in China called Billy Billy has that. Um, I'll get the name of that documentary uh, sent out to you. Your wife may be able to get it, but it's purely about 
him and introducing science fiction to the Chinese culture. And they're going to do great things with it. I can promise you that. Right on. Well, no, I, I mean, I, I'm down with all the sci-fis. Give me all the sci-fis. I don't care where they come from. That's yeah, my jam. So, all right, guys, I got to head out because we're uh, we're we're <laughs> we're long in the tooth here. We got mm-hmm. the uh, True SDX working, so it's it's more capable than it ever was before. So I, <laughs> I appreciate you and indulging me to go through that. So thanks everybody on the Discord. Appreciate you hanging out. Yeah, and we squeezed in the the movie talk at the end. We did. Yes, we, so did. we did. We did. We <laughs> did. We did. Well, actually, we didn't really hit up on movies, but we got a lot of really good shows that are out right now. Yeah, so you yeah. Should, you should definitely get and in on those if you can. J- J.K. Flip Flop just mentioned another one I'd recommend. All the light we cannot see. Very good, very good, and radio theme show. Oh, I haven't seen any of those. I mean, it's not all radio, but it it's a very key part of the story. Where where is it? Uh, I can't remember if it was on Netflix or it's on one of the big guys. I'll look. Okay. All right. Liberty Gibbet. <laughs> Jody, you, you son of a bitch. Jody's like, we almost had a full, complete bingo card, except nobody got me started on Elon. I, so. I tried. Mm-hmm. I tried. I posted something in I mean, there what, about it. What else, what, do, what else do I need to have to say at this point? Again, I wake mm-hmm. up every morning and I look in the mirror and I go, you were right about Elon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What, what else can you say? I'm, I'm already, I'm already good. And <laughs> bingo. bingo! There it is. Like, there it is. Good. You can check the box. And, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get stuck with Starlink. There is, I there is not another solution out there where I'm going. Again, I will repeat my well, opinion. I think there are good engineers that work at Tesla and SpaceX. They're all. I think they're doing the best they can, but they, they've got Elon Musk <laughs> helming the, the ship. Oh, buddy. Uh, I will say, everybody, so uh, Discord, I'm going to hop off. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. I'm going to wrap things up. Take it easy. 73. Guys. 73, Josh. Take it easy. 73. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, I, I will be back this Wednesday. We're going to be doing uh, a, a full quiet live stream. So we're going to – we're. I, I have uh, had a number of people reach out and say, like, yes, we're going to do full quiet again. So they, they want to see it. So I'll do it. Uh, not my highest viewed video in any way, but I have fun doing it. So we'll we'll definitely try and make that happen. Um, What else? I don't think that's I, I think that's about it. I, we got a, we got we're, we're rolling into the hot months, right? Because I'll be doing Visalia soon here. So, by the way, join join me at Visalia if you can. If you're around the International DX Convention, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you join us out there. Hamvention is coming up. It's not too far away. And then we're going to wrap things up with uh, with D- uh, Huntsville. Jeez, I almost had completely lost it on that one. We'll be wrapping it up with Huntsville. And that's going to be an amazing amount of fun, too. So we're, we're kind of getting into the hot streak. Uh, with that said, I also have the Ham Radio Crash Course Camp Out that's coming up in uh, April. So... A lot's happening. Uh, April's probably my busiest month, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you uh, you hang out there. And and Brent Ware, if you're just joining us now, I'm so sorry because I'm wrapping things up, buddy. But uh, thanks for coming out, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you had fun talking with Randy and everything today. And, yeah, I think that's it. Enjoy the memes. I'll play you out. 73.